ambush. Washington State, off to its best start in eight years, hopes to escape Wyoming and stay unbeaten. It's the Cougars and the Cowboys next on Northwest Cable Sports. Cable Sports is brought to you by Rainier Beer, the only beer to drink around here. Seattle Lighting, your bright idea store with seven locations in the Puget Sound area. And by Dwayne Lane Chrysler Plymouth in South Everett, Washington's newest Chrysler Plymouth dealership. From War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming, it's Cougar Football 89 as the Washington State Cougars take on the Wyoming Cowboys. Hello everyone, I'm Bud Namick, and along with former Washington State quarterback Cleet Casper, we'll have all the action today between the Cougars and the Cowboys, and the Cougars hope that they're playing a pretty nice tune once this contest is over. Aaron Garcia, redshirt freshman, making his first start at quarterback for Washington State. You know what that's like. Well, obviously, Aaron's going to be real excited today. It's his first start, and he's calling home to mom and dad, saying, look for me in the, the newspaper tomorrow, because you're going to see my stats and that kind of thing. But I think the key here for Aaron is he's already played. And it's not something new. He's already proved that he can move this team and do it well. And I think the key to, for him is just to do the same things he did last week. Throw the ball where it needs to be thrown and don't force anything. And he did a real good job last week uh, maneuvering that offense down and, and scoring a couple touchdowns. One thing that could ease things for Aaron Garcia and Washington State, a lot of teams able to run very well against Wyoming. Steve Broussard could have a big day. Well, we're looking for good things from Steve again coming off the 150-yard uh, performance last week. And I think, again, that... Uh, Wyoming's defensive line is a little shooken up, and uh, the offensive line of the Cougars should be able to pick them apart. Number of injuries on the defensive line for the Cowboys. We will talk about that more in just a moment. We'll have the kickoff first. As of September 1st, Northwest Cable Sports became Prime Sports Northwest to reflect, reflect our affiliation with the Prime Sports Network, televising a lot of Pac-10 football and something you'll be seeing a lot of in the future. We're proud of the association and glad that you're with us today. It's the Cougars and the Cowboys on Cougar Football 89. will be at the back of Washington State to get things started. So we will see the Wyoming Cowboy offense first, led by quarterback Tom Carantos, a 6'2", 180-pound sophomore out of Great Falls. The backup is Bobby Frescus, and the number three quarterback for the Cowboys is Peter Rowe, the 6'2", 200-pound sophomore out of Edmonton, who transferred from Washington State. And Rowe, talking earlier this week about regretting the decision to leave Washington State to come to Wyoming. He lost a year of eligibility in the transfer. He is still the number three quarterback, and who knows, if he's at Washington State right now, he might be starting this football game, Cleet Casper, instead of Aaron Garcia. Well, the truth is, he isn't. He's going to be on the bench today, and Aaron Garcia, we're looking for great things again this week. He showed us last week against Oregon State that he's a physical, physically can perform and the key today, I think, for Aaron is whether or not mentally he can pick up the things that uh, Wyoming's going to throw at him on defense. So we're looking for a, a wide-open game again, and it should be an exciting one. The stadium was built in 1950. Originally seated just 20,000. They have added on a couple of times to get that total up to 33,500. Laramie, this is a beautiful day for football. Can't quite say afternoon because it's almost afternoon. We'll be starting at about 12.07 here. But Laramie located between the snowy range to the west, the Laramie range to the east, about 120 miles northwest of Denver. And the population of this city, 28,000 in the altitude. And they display it promptly. You can't quite see it, but if you look up straight from the 50-yard line up in the stands, it's 7,220 feet. I think that's there as a reminder for the opposing team. That's an advertisement to the defensive and offensive linemen that they're going to be sucking wind in the fourth quarter. Uh, effectively, I think the Cougars have enough people that they can run them in and out, especially on the defensive line, 
Uh, they had some people come in and play well last week with the absence of Tony Savage, so that just bolstered their ability to do some new things on the defensive line and trade those guys in and out. There's Paul Roach on the sidelines with the hat and the headset on. 22-7 and seven in his third year here at Wyoming. The Cowboys have been to seven bowl games. Four while Roach has been a head or assistant coach. They've been involved in six Western Athletic Conference titles. Five of those with Roach here at the University of Wyoming. He's coached in the NFL, the running back coach for John Madden and the Oakland Raiders, the offensive coordinator at Green Bay, and he coached for Red Miller at Denver. A couple outstanding kickers in this game. Folks in the state of Washington, very familiar with number four, Jason Hansen, the sophomore out of Meade High School in Spokane. A sophomore on the other side for the Wyoming Cowboys is Sean Fleming. He handles the punting and the place kicking. He has made 65 consecutive PATs. In fact, he's never missed a PAT here at Wyoming. He has a very strong leg and has a 90-yard punt to his credit already. It'll be Peter Gunn and Dabby Dawson back deep to receive Hansen's kick, and I doubt they'll get a chance to return it with this wind at Hansen's back. Gunn, a great story, had major knee problems last year, major surgery, wasn't expecting to be back running until October, and is now returning kicks and seeing some action in the backfield. And the Wyoming will start on their own 20, as you heard the ROTC cannon blast, and they might have blown your ears away, too. And if they score, if the Cowboys score, we're going to hear that again. Well, right there was an indication of uh, Jason Hansen's range today. It looked for a 60-yard field goal as he split the uprights with that kickoff. So the Cowboys going on offense with Dwayne Jones, a 5'11", 198-pound senior out of Colorado Springs, Springs in the backfield, along with Dabby Dawson and Carranzas, number 18, the quarterback, 6'2", 180-pound sophomore. Backs now split behind Carranzas, who has three wide receivers. And there's the handoff to Jones, and Jones tries to go outside and is wrestled down after about a two-yard gain, a host of Cougars there. But last week, I thought we saw the... Cougar defense really come together as a unit with all aspects. The linebackers and line playing real good and putting real good pressure on Oregon State last week. And, of course, everybody is remembering uh, the six interceptions that they had last week. There, look at the skill position players. Melvin Wells out of Spokane Falls Community College. Gordy Wood had a great game. The tight end out of Bremerton. Ten catches against Hawaii last week. Karantzis to throw for the first time. He's drilled as he gets away, and it is caught. I believe Wood making the catch on that one. Let's see if it is indeed Wood. No, it's Sean Wiggins, who also had a good game against Hawaii. Wiggins, a 5'10", 165-pound junior out of Robbins, Illinois, with the catch. Well, that was a good job by Carranza. He felt a little pressure there, but delivered the ball right on the money. He had to be on the money because there was good coverage by the Cougars. Pick up of eight, good enough for a first down at the 30. There you see the Cougars with Gray, Downing, Woodley, and Brown along the front line. There you see the backs with Grayson Ricard, Moton, Diggs, and Noble for Washington State. Carranzas changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Wants to throw on first down. Rolls out and has all kinds of time and simply throws it away. He was looking for Melvin Wells, but Ron Ricard had pretty good coverage. Stallworth on the sideline had his first catch of the game. It was uh, ball thrown right to him. Unfortunately, he's on the bench right now. The Cowboys on offense averaging just 60 yards a game on the ground. 214 through the air for a total of 274. We've got a flag against Washington State. And it will set up a first down and five opportunities. The Cougars were lined up in the neutral zone. Penalty, still first down. One of the things I think that you saw right there was Wyoming maybe moving the pocket out a little bit to get away from the pressure that they saw that the Cougars applied Oregon State last week. And I think it's a pretty sound concept. The Cougars are big and strong up front and also have excellent speed on the outside with Lewis Bush and Grayson and people. First and five for the Cowboys. Carranzas to play action fake and throws over the middle. Grayson got a hand on it and it's intercepted. Chris Moton comes up with the interception for the Cougars. 12th interception of the season for Washington State. They lead the nation in that category. Great stuff. Take away, get him great field position. Here's the replay. Hold it. We, we got, got a flag, flag on the side. Uh, we see Carranzas. This is the play they overthrew here. Uh, we don't know what the uh, indication is. But it's it's off sides against Washington State, so it comes back, and Mike Price not happy. He's out on the field. By the way, this is an all-Western Athletic Conference alignment of officials. This Offside is Offside against the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. The umpire is John Bradley. Lineman is Don O'Neill. Line judge is Burton Jarman. Field judge, Bernie Del Hierro. Ken Flaherty, the side judge, back judge is Bob Mantooth. So it is now first and 10 on the 40 now for Carranzas and the Cowboys who get the ball back 
after the penalty. This is Jones on the delay, and he gets about three, maybe four, as Mark Ledbetter and a host of Cougars are in on the tackle. An interesting thing about the Cougar defense is they have the capability to play what is, in effect, five down linemen with Ledbetter being able to be a, a pass rusher, and it really is an effective defense against this type of one-back running game. And we'll look to see them shut down this Wyoming game, I think, uh, as far as the rushing is concerned. Melvin Wells, a wide receiver, comes to the near side as you see second and six for Carranzas, who will throw. And it was intended for the tight end, Gordy Wood, but Wood can't make the catch. Well, we won't see much of that in warm-ups. I saw Wood running his little routes, and he showed excellent hands. Again, good coverage by the Cougars. Should have been caught. Alvin Dunn making the defensive play out of Bryan, Texas, Sacramento Community College. Washington State looking at a cowboy offense that produced 24 completions against Hawaii, but Tarantis hit Gilmore, Wood, and Wiggins for all 24 of those completions. Cougars with that five-man front. Good rush. Tarantis has time. Now he does another flag as Downing makes the sack. Downing leads the Pac-10 in sacks with four and a half coming into the game. And let's see if it's a hold against Wyoming. If it is, obviously Washington State would decline the penalty, and we would see Sean Fleming for the first time, and that appears to be the case. You saw Downing saying, and I was being held ref, and uh, that was an excellent pass rush. Downing just strength went right through his man into the quarterback's lane. Here's the replay. You see Downing lined up at his left tackle. And he'll come in, put the pressure just go right through his man. Excellent pass rush by the Cougars. That's the kind of thing that they need to do to stop this Wyoming offense. C.J. Davis back for Washington State to receive the kick. He is set up on the Cougar 25. Line of scrimmage to 32 for Fleming. Gets it away. Fair catch called for. Perhaps you heard it from the sideline, Mike. One of the Cougar coaches yelling out called a fair catch. Davis listened, and the Cougars will take over on their own 27-yard line. So the defense gets an interception that's negated and then holds, and the offense will see their first action. From Wyoming's standpoint, uh, their first series, uh, they had a couple people open and missed them. And I think Carranza might have uh, been looking a little bit at one receiver too long, which was certainly the case on that interception. There's a good look at Aaron Garcia, the redshirt freshman, six foot, 182 pounds, out of Grant High School in Sacramento. He will throw on first down. The screen to Broussard, running room, outside, has a blocker. It is Paul Wolf, the center, and Broussard with a good gain out to the 46-yard line. Well, I really like that call as far as giving Aaron Garcia a little confidence, as we explained in the pregame, to, to hit that first pass, to get some momentum. Here you'll see him drop back, inviting the rush. Does a good job of looking downfield and then checking out here to Broussard. It makes a nice catch and uses explosive speed to get downfield and excellent opening play for the Cougars. Nice job by center Paul Wolf to get out on the block, the 6'4 senior out of Davis, California. John Husby, Robert Norvell, Steve Cromer, Bob Garvin on the offensive line. This is Broussard, and he's dragged down from behind. Nice pursuit by Mitch Donahue, the 6'3 junior out of Billings, Montana. Well, there you see a little evidence of what Wyoming wants to do on defense, and they do what's called the tilt defense, and basically that's the old Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, Joe Green. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers made that famous, and uh, we'll see if it's effective against the running game. There you see the skill position players, Davis Stallworth, wide receivers with Wilson to tight end for Washington State. Scooter Stogner and Ron Young are in. Along with Stallworth as the trip's right formation for the Cougars. Broussard the lone back. On second and 14, Garcia to throw. Got Stallworth. Pressure. Overthrew him. Stallworth stumbled a bit on the 40. We talked earlier, as we were down taking a look at the field, it's kind of choppy, and it almost looked like Stallworth caught his feet a little bit on that. I think the, the safety did a pretty good job of jamming him at the line of scrimmage, but that's a very dangerous formation that uh, Wyoming lined up in there, and I just can't believe they're going to go with that type of uh, defensive strategy. It's just uh, inviting Stallworth to go all the way. Garcia... 10 for 13 for 98 yards, two touchdowns and an interception in the relief rule after Gosson was hurt against Oregon State. So far this year, 12 out of 18, 122 yards, those two touchdowns. Flag on the play. I think we got to delay a game. 
Craig Slickting, you see there, out of Spring Lake, Minnesota, celebrating. So it's going to be from third long to third and longer. Play a dead ball, call start against the offense. I didn't see somebody move there, but apparently one of the interior linemen uh, starting a little early there. Something that Mike Price is not happy with already, as we see the, the jump here. That was Bob Garman jumping up. Cougars have been penalized three times for 15 yards already. Wyoming yet to see the fly. Third and 19 for Garcia. Two wide receivers to the right, one left, Broussard the lone back. Broussard stays in to block Garcia, drilled as he gets it away, and it was intended for Stallworth, who slipped. Ron Dean on the coverage, and the Wyoming defense, which has been a bit maligned, gets an ovation from the Cowboy faithful here. At that time, Stallworth went down, went to make his move and break to the out, and just lost his footing. That was a case, I think, there, the Cougars really stopping themselves. Myers set the kick. Tim Mara back deep for the Cowboys. One of the two setbacks. And a big kick by Myers, and it curls into the end zone. So Myers with a 63-yard punt. So the Cowboys will get the opportunity to take over on their own 20. 11.50 left to play in the quarter. Washington State nothing, Wyoming nothing. You're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. Back to action and Wyoming has run their first play. As the Cowboys tried to kick it outside, it was Dwayne Jones on the carry. Actually, Dabby Dawson getting his first carry that time. Dawson picked up a yard. Dawson last year, 1,119 yards, averaged 7.6 yards a carry, but he struggled a bit this year, just 157 yards, three and a half yards a carry. He scored a couple of touchdowns. Second and nine from the 21, Dawson the lone back. Four wide receivers for the Cowboys. Cougars with the four-man front. No blitz, and the pass is thrown out. Nice catch by Sean Wiggins, and he is able to pick up the first down. Wiggins making the catch off the pass from Tom Carances. Carances put the ball exactly where he had to throw it. Otherwise, uh, Chris Moton had an excellent inter interception opportunity. He went for it. You'll see him stretch out there and just miss it. Nice throw by Carances, high and outside where the defense can't get it. Good hustle by Moton to hustle back and get the, the tackle. Gain of 15 on the play as you take another look at Carances. Bit of a gamble there by Moton. Uh, you don't like to see that as a coach, but that's a split-second decision. Wood, the tight end, lined up in a slot position. He's the intended receiver. Makes the catch as he was sandwiched by Moton from one side, Grayson from the other. But Wood atones for the earlier drop by making the catch. Again, Wyoming moving the pocket. You'll see Carranza is drifting to his right. Downing gets good contain. Nice catch by Gordy Wood. Wood, a junior out of Bremerton. Dawson in the backfield for the Cowboys. And the handoff goes to Dabby, and he tries the middle, and he's wrapped up by Lewis Bush. Looks like he's a little short of the first down. That'll bring up third down for him. It'll be a third and short situation for the Cowboys, who are facing just their second third down situation. Tim Downing came up with the sack last time on third down. Wholesale substitutions, as you see Dawson Gilmore and Wells leave. Peter Gunn comes into the lineup. And a double tight end look with Wood and Ryan Bowers in the lineup. On fourth and one. And a tough inside runner. Actually, it was Gunn. Peter Gunn, and he's got the first down. In that time, they actually had three tight ends in the ball game. And a flag on the play. And again, it's offsides against Washington State. And in your experiences as a Cougar quarterback, when you play a game like this and you've got an all-Western Athletic Conference officiating crew, are there little discrepancies between the two crews? Might that be offside the confusion of the offside? Against the defense, well, five-yard penalty, first down. 
usually what you've got is you've got three penalties in a row on the same call that something is definitely wrong, so you have to make those adjustments and maybe be back off the ball a little bit. Uh, I don't think that's a, a penalty that is very, very much from, from conference to conference. Jones and Gunn in the backfield on first down for Carranzas. And reverse, a reverse, pass. and it's going to be a pass. This is Gilmore throwing it up for Wells, and it's intercepted. The Cougars come up with the interception. Ron Ricard with his second big interception. The last one he had was in the end zone against the Idaho Vandals. Excellent job by Ronnie Ricard, recognizing that it was indeed a, a pass play. You'll see the razzle-dazzle that does it. There's the throw downfield, and Ricard trailing, trailing. January makes an excellent interception, and the Cougars have the ball. Big play for the Cougars. So Aaron Garcia and the Cougar offense will get another opportunity thanks to Ron Ricard out of Burbank, Washington, suburb of the Tri-Cities. And Garcia will get things going. He will have Broussard in the backfield, three wide receivers to the left. That's Stallworth in the slot. Garcia to throw. That's time, now pressured, and misses C.J. Davis. Dorel Drake, the 6'4", 235-pound freshman who was moved to the outside, to the end position because of the injury to Doug Rigby with the pressure there. Well, uh, here we see on that last play, Garcia doing an excellent job of recognizing that Broussard was covered and checking off to the to the wide side of the field and he did everything right from a mental side but uh, missed, just missed him quite a bit. There you see the Cougars with those four penalties for 20 yards. Garcia now one out of four for 19 yards on that one reception. Second down and the crowd trying to get into it. This is the pitch to Broussard. Uses that quickness to try to get outside and there's simply nowhere to go. Out of bounds at the nine, a loss of four. Good pursuit by Paul Wallace and Ron Dean as the secondary came up to get Broussard behind the line of scrimmage. Excellent job by Wyoming, recognizing that uh, the defensive secondary can come up and run support. And a uh, good job by Ron Dean there, coming up and supporting and making the tackle or at least forcing Broussard out of bounds. So Aaron Garcia making his first start, being faced with a couple of tough situations, a couple of third and longs early, didn't click earlier. Broussard, two carries for minus 10 so far. And everybody thought you could run against the Cowboys. It's early, but they've done a great job so far. Garcia into the end zone now, moving around. Now wants to throw, and he's chased down from behind. And on the sack, Mitch Donahue, the 6'3 junior out of Billings, his fourth sack of the year. Garcia appeared to have enough time to throw that one, please. That's Good right. coverage. Excellent coverage by Wyoming there back in their nickel package with five DBs. And again, you have to credit Garcia for not forcing the ball in, in the deep in their own territory. Myers had a 63-yard punt in his first effort. He'll try it again, and the Cougars would like to see that again. Gets this one away, and it is another nice kick. And this is Tim Morrow makes the catch. It is 40. And the Cougars with some coverage, but he gets outside. Has running room into the 30 and forced out of bounds. Finally run out by Rodney Scott. So Tim Mara does a nice job of the freshman giving the Cowboys excellent field position. Oh, it's a good kick by Meyer. But uh, we got Montana. roughing the kicker being called. Well, that'll certainly help. Boy, Washington State has been able to keep a couple of drives. No. Now he just pointed in the direction of Washington State, so perhaps offsetting penalties. Let's let him sort it out. Paul Wolf standing by. Mitch Donahue standing by. And they're trying to find out exactly what went on. And I think it's going to be offsetting penalties, and it will be Cowboy football. Let's hear I have running into the kicker against the defense. I have unsportsmanlike against the kicker. Will offset. Replay. Let, let's watch and see what happens here. Well, there's the kick. And there's the running into the kicker. And we don't see anything unsportsmanlike in that uh, on our screen there. So... We'll just have to believe the official that something happened that wasn't quite right there and kick it again. There's Del White, defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, former defensive coordinator for the Washington State Cougars. So Myers will try it again. And he will be kicking from his end zone. There's a good look at Myers, the senior out of Black and Yada. Paul Wallace back deep along with Tim Mara. 
good snap and no rush, and Myers gets this one away, and it will be Mara again. This time it is 44, but doesn't catch the football. Has to cover it back at the 39. Simply misjudged that one. So the Cougars get a nice break on field position, and the Cowboys will start from their own 39. Excellent job again by Meyer. 8.08 left to play in the first quarter. No score. You're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. <laughs> Wyoming Cowboys with a football first and 10 on their own 39. Cowboys with four first downs in this contest. Cougars have just one. <laughs> Cowboys keep it on the ground and a good game by Peter Gunn. Out to the 45. And that has to be a boost for Paul Roach and the Cowboys. Gunn. Not expected to play much at all this year due to a severe knee injury a year ago. Had just two carries for a yard coming in to this game. Bobby Frescas is in at quarterback now for the Cowboys. I wonder if Carranza's uh, got hurt maybe making a block on that reverse pass. Frescas is a south left-hander. Nope, it's still Carranza's at quarterback. We got a pass over the middle and it's complete. Sean Wiggins. So Carranzas gets it to Wiggins for the big game, and the Cowboys are knocking on the door. Here we go. Carranzas gets pretty good time here. Sets, finds his receiver, and lets it go and puts it in there perfectly. Couldn't tell who got beat there. Sean Riggins, Wiggins uh, made an excellent catch, and a uh, big gainer for the Cowboys. They're in scoring position. Gain of 44. As you take a look, nice catch by Wiggins. So the Cowboys with first and 10 call it on the 11-yard line. Ben of the lone back for Carranzas. Flushed out, and not the most mobile quarterback in the world, but gets down to the 8-yard line. Well, the Cowboys came out here and tried to flood the wide side of the field again. Carranzas looked down there, didn't see anything open, and did the wise thing and tucked it up and got a good five yards out of it. Tony Savage coming in for Washington State. He missed the Oregon State game with the ankle injury. Virtually missed all of the BYU game. But he is in on the defensive line now. Carranza's four out of six for 72 yards so far in the contest. That's Melvin Wells coming in motion. Roosevelt Noble goes with him. The handoff to Benna, and he is a tough inside runner and has yardage that appears to be good enough for the first down. Well, Bennett did an excellent job just making his own way down to the goal line carried a couple people with him it looked like Tony Savage had a shot at him early and couldn't wrap him up and take him down first and goal from the half yard line Washington State was able to keep Oregon State out of the end zone but it looks like the Cowboys have a chance to change that we've got a whistle timeout called by Washington State so the Cougars have elected to use a timeout defensively. And we will take a timeout with 6-10 left to play in the first quarter. Wyoming nothing, Washington State nothing. You're watching Cougar football on Prime Sports Northwest. So far in this contest, the Cowboys with 87 yards of total offense. Washington State just nine. Well, obviously, Wyoming has done an excellent job so far, especially in this drive. Uh, hitting the right people and making the right decisions and surprisingly have ran the ball quite well against the Cougars. Carranzas with the double tight end look now. And that's tight end Wood going in motion. Fumble on the snap and let's see who's got it. Carranzas appeared to fall on it. But we'll let the officials sort it out. See the Cougars coming up off the pile. Moton in there and it is indeed second down. Loss of about a half a yard on this play. A lot of times this will happen down the goal line. The center is so concerned with getting low penetration that he doesn't uh, concentrate on getting that ball snapped up there. And it didn't look like Carranza had even got the, got the ball. Mark Timmer in the backfield, along with Gunn. This is Gunn, and he falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Wyoming. Cowboys take the lead on the one-yard run by Peter Gunn. Well, for a, bad, for a guy who's supposed to have a bad leg, he surely showed uh, excellent running skills on that drive. 
and punches into the end zone. You'll hear, you'll see the tackle pull, guard pull, and an excellent job by Gunn to keep his balance and get in the end zone. The winning tacks on the extra point is 66th in a row here at Wyoming. So with 5.39 left to play in this first quarter, it's the Cowboys 7 and the Cougars nothing. And Fleet of Washington State wants to get something going. They need to start to establish the running game a little better, something we talked about that we thought they might be able to do fairly easily with the injury-depleted front line for the Cowboys. Well, they saw this same tilt defense against Idaho and had trouble running the ball. I think the key to what Washington State needs to get focused on again is uh, get away from that third and long where the Cowboys can bring their nickel package in. Let's get down. Let's, let's have a, a first down play where we get five yards and then work our short uh, possession passing game into the picture. Here from ground level, we see the touchdown again. Carranzos gives the ball to Gunn. Gets the good blocks up front. Leans into the end zone for the Cowboys first score. Cougars with Desmond Clayton and Anthony Pryor back deep to receive the kick. Pryor has never returned a kick at Washington State. Clayton three for an average of 18 yards. Fleming will kick off from the 35 into a breeze that at game time was 10 miles an hour. And he hangs this one up and it will go into the end zone. And Clayton will actually not even be able to cover it as it goes out the back. So the Cougars will start first and 10 at their own 20. Boy, this has certainly been the year of the kicker. Those, uh, those guys must be on a new training program. Arizona Wildcats and the Oregon Ducks, Saturday, September 30th. You'll see that contest at 3.30 on Prime Sports Northwest. The Cats and the Ducks, and that should be a good one. Oregon playing well early, and Arizona, of course, that big win over Oklahoma. First and 10 from the 20 for Aaron Garcia and the Cougars. That's Broussard going to a slot. So the Cougars will try to get Broussard the football to slot. This is Paul Carr running room and gets close to the Cougar first down. Ron Dean in on the tackle. Well, there's something that we haven't seen much. Uh, usually you'll see Broussard is alone back in the backfield. I think what the coaches have seen is a tendency for Wyoming to really focus on Broussard. And that was an excellent call. And that's the type of thing we need to get. We need a, a nice balanced uh, passing and running game. 61 yards, six plays, 229 the time on the scoring drive for Wyoming. Rich Swinton reinstated to the football team by Mike Price, but not here because of a hamstring injury. So Carr, the number two running back. A blitz and the handoff to Broussard, and he is run down from behind. Broussard about a step and away from breaking that one as Daryl Harris was able to drag him down. Harris, the top tackler on this Cowboy team. And Broussard and Carr seem to have turned the running game around. Here we see the Cowboys coming with a blitz from the outside. Center Paul Wolf goes out and gets a good block on the linebacker, and Broussard was one step away. You can see his uh, ankle get rolled underneath there, and he might be hobbled a little bit. That's not a good sign. So Carr, Carr, the lone setback now, as the Cougars have three wide receivers. They are not in a trips formation. Garcia, long drop. Over the middle, caught by the tight end, Doug Wilson. And we've got a flag thrown at the feet of Aaron Garcia and at the feet of Bob Garvin as Willie Wright makes the tackle. And it appears that one's going to come back as a hold and Bob Garvin, the 6'5 sophomore out of Olympic High School in Bremerton, not happy. And Mike Price isn't very happy either. He looks on with a perplexed look as Gene Wirtz makes the call. Well, so far, the WAC crew is keeping uh, the Cougars back in their own end of the field. I, uh, I, again, it might have done a good call. I just couldn't see it, but uh, certainly the penalties have stopped a couple of the Cougar drives so far, and they've got to eliminate that stuff. So the Cougars now penalized five times for 30 yards in this game. And they move the ball back to the 36, where it will be first and 20. So the play-calling situations haven't been the greatest for Washington State so far in this contest. Carr and Broussard in the backfield. Garcia, the count, play action to Broussard, and Garcia rolls out, has a running run, and is able to pick up about six or seven yards before he's finally chased out of bounds by Paul Wallace and Robert Midget. Midget coming off the, his career best game, earning the start at middle linebacker. Young guy who's had a lot of injury problems in his Cougar career. That's one of the things Washington State has talked about this week with Aaron Garcia, quarterback. They say he's pretty mobile. 
No, he showed good mobility there out running uh, most of the defensive end and defensive linebackers uh, on that rollout, that play action uh, bootleg that uh, the Cougars run so well. And uh, again, nothing was open, so he takes it up and gets his six yards and got a chance to get the first down. Good job by Aaron. So call it second and 14 from the 42. Trips left for the Cougars. Watch for Stallworth here. Looks like Garcia is audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Short drop. Quick pass. Stallworth. You called it, Fleet. Down to the 47-yard line. You can see across the board in the defensive secondary that Wyoming is content to play man-to-man. -man. And uh, here you see Garcia looking Stallworth the whole way and delivers the ball right where it needs to be. Uh, they must have uh, a lot of confidence in number 28 for Wyoming. That's, uh, I'm sorry, that's Paul Wallace who's making that coverage, but uh, he must be one of their best cover men to, to take him one-on-one -on -one with Stallworth like that. Just a freshman, they're very excited about him. Third and three for the Cougars. Double tight end look. Actually, three tight ends, and that was Williams in motion, but he can't help Broussard. Nice second effort by Broussard to push forward but he can't get the first down. Robert Midget making the stop. <laughs> this is an interesting situation for Mike Price and his people. Three options. Go for it, Hanson, or do you punt it? I think you go for it right here. If I'm, uh, now it looks like he's going to send up the, here's the replay. Uh, Broussard really not much room there trying to get what he could. Excellent job by Wyoming again to come up and support the run. So they'll give it the ball to, uh, Meyer and let him boot for the corner. Myers will try to kick it out of bounds as the line of scrimmage is the 46 yard line. For the Cowboys. Might watch for the fake here. Paul Carr is the personal protector. Well, you're one for two. Myers just hangs it way, way high. Fair catch called for by Mara, and he catches it at the 15. So Myers does his job on the punt, and the Cowboys will have the football on their 15 to get things started. Well, I kind of would have liked to see Mike go for that right there. Uh, but against, uh, I guess, a, a Wyoming team here at home, he feels field position is uh, is important here and is going to give the ball back to or give the game back to his defense and see if they can stop Wyoming down in their own end zone and get the ball back in good field position. Dawson and Jones in the backfield behind Karatsis. And that's Dawson changing positions in the backfield. And the handoff goes to Mark Timmer, who's in the backfield. And he is knocked down at 12. We got a very late flag. Ron Ricard and wide receiver Ted Gilmore were going at it upfield, and that's where the flag was thrown. Well, if that's a penalty against the Cougars, that's uh, uh, the, the players are indicating holding against Wyoming, and that was uh, an interesting call so far away from the ball as Ron Ricard and uh, Ted Gilmore were mixing it up about 25 yards away from the play. So, And the Cougars have apparently decided to decline the penalty. That's what they're talking about. Dan Grayson right there, you see, talking things over. And if the Cougars do decline it, it would set up a second and 13. Let's take a listen. Holding against the offense, declined, second down. Well, there we see Gordy, Gordy Wood, uh, who is known for his pass receiving, but uh, right there he made an excellent tackle. And that's what the flag was all about. So second and 13 from the 12. The lone back is Dawson going in motion. Grayson running with him. Karatsis, pressure, hit. It was Lewis Bush coming in from the outside linebacker spot. The sophomore out of Tacoma with the sack. Lewis Bush with excellent speed just comes from his outside linebacker position and puts the hit on Karatsis. Here he comes again. No back in the backfield to pick him up. And he almost got the ball there. And he's excited about it. Good job, Lewis. Good job. Ball back on the five-yard line now. So it's third and 20. Dawson, the lone running back. Two wide receivers left. And it's Dawson on the draw. Gets away from Downing and has some good running work. He's shy on the first down, so Fleming will have to come on. But a good game by Dawson, so now Fleming won't have to kick it out of the end zone. Nice call there to cross up the, the Cougar coaches a little bit there. They were in again with their nickel package and uh, while they didn't get the first down they'd give them a little breathing room ball on the 22 now gain a 17 for Dawson on that Fleming to kick it 
kinds of time. No rush by Washington State. Good kick by Fleming. Hangs it high. C.J. Davis at the 24. Has a little bit of running room. Takes it up the gut and gets hit hard at the 32. So the Cougars will take over with some pretty decent field position as Aaron Garcia will try to get things going offensively. Boy, that was a heck of a kick into the wind here. And it's a pretty stiff breeze, and he booted that ball up and had probably a five-second hang time on it. Excellent punt by uh, Wyoming. Is it Mara? Sean Fleming. Sean Fleming. So the Cougars with their third offensive possession, and they have picked up three first downs, two of them coming the last time they had it. Calvin Griggs, the wide receiver way left. Stallworth is in the slot. Scooter Stogner on the right side. Broussard, the lone setback. Garcia, two out of five for 30 yards. Hands it off to Broussard this time. Outside, running room. Across the 40, cuts outside and tackled with an arm under the neck by Paul Wallace at about the 49-yard line. I don't know what the official was watching there, but that was a dangerous tackle, and that's the old Tatum type of tackling, and uh, Broussard could have got choked up pretty good there. Nice hole opened up by the Cougs on the left side of the line, and Broussard uses excellent speed. Got a good block there by Stallworth. And you'll see this tackle come right across the head, and that's uh, that's dangerous football right there. That should have been a penalty. 12-yard gain for Broussard after the 44. You saw the graphic. He is the career scoring leader as far as touchdowns go for Washington State and rushing touchdowns. He is number two on the all-time scoring charts. John Trout, the kicker, ahead of him. Paul Carr inside, and a good surge by the offensive line pushes Carr out near the midfield stripe. This Craig Schlick, the three-letter winner for the... Cowboys in on the stop. Here we see uh, the Cougars in their two tight end offense, and that means they're just going to blow the, the Wyoming people off the ball. Broussard coming through the hole, picking his way, and keeps those legs churning. And the whole pile moves forward for about six. There you see the Cougars at the line of scrimmage with Husby, Norvell, Wolf, Cromer, and Garman across that front line. Trips to the right. There's Aaron Garcia, the red shirt freshman out of Sacramento. Watch Broussard at the sideline to drop the football. It's the touchdown by the Cougars have scored a couple of times on when they get Broussard isolated against the linebacker, and he had Robert Midget, the middle linebacker, against him. But Garcia couldn't hang on to the ball. He lost his footing on his uh, drop back there, and I think he saw the rush and, and may have panicked a little bit. The Cougars had the right play called, and Wyoming was gambling a little bit. Uh, again, the Cougars back to a, a third and long situation. We'll see Wyoming go into their zone nickel package. Loss of seven there, third and 12 from the 42. C.J. Davis to the near side, Stallworth and Ron Young on the right to the Cougars with Broussard in the backfield. And we got into the first quarter. So after 15 minutes of football, the Cowboys of Wyoming, seven, Washington State, nothing. You're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. There's a look at a part of the crowd here at War Memorial Stadium. It's interesting, the Cowboys were hoping for a sellout when this game was, oh, perhaps about a year ago because a lot of folks here in Laramie and in Wyoming looking forward to the return of Dennis Erickson who left here after just one year as the head coach and they were expecting a crowd of only between 16 to 20,000 today with Erickson out of the picture. Third and 12 for the Cougars. The Cowboys show blitz. They don't come. Good protection. Garcia, the home run ball intended for Ron Young, and Young can't get there. Ivor Samilton with the coverage. And Garcia looking up, holding his hands up, saying, what's the story? Well, Mike Price is not very uh, happy with that call, and he's looking for interference. And uh, the referee back there says uh, that was an uncatchable ball, and uh, judgment call, and Mike's not very happy, though. He's not been happy with the proceedings at all so far. The Cougars have been penalized for 30 yards. And it brings on Mr. Myers again to kick. This is the most action Rob Myers has had this season. And he will be kicking into that win with the two men deep for the Cowboys. No rush, and the kick is a driving kick. And it's going to be Mara making the catch at about the 16, and he gets at about the 19 where he is hit very hard. Got a flag, and again, a flag is right. Maybe this lighter air causes those uh, referees' flags to come out <laughs> a little out, out of the pocket. pocket because they've been out there today. 
Cowboys are walking back with the offensive huddle near the goal line, so you can bet it's against them, and indeed the signal does go against them. Carranza is now four out of five for 74 yards. Cowboys have 21 yards on the ground. First down. Mike Price, a little animation. He's trying to get his Cougars fired up. Well, I think he's making his point that he doesn't feel that the game's been called well, at least from his standpoint, and uh, that has an effect. So the Cowboys with the football inside their own 10-yard line. See what Carranzas does here, the backs of the eye behind him. And the pitch goes to the deep back. That's Dawson, tries to get some running room, and breaks away from one man. And finally, Dan Grayson and John Biggs in on the tackle for Washington State, but basically Dawson, Dawson, able to pick up a couple of yards. Well, here you see Dabby. He's got that excellent speed to the outside. Langwin comes up here and forces the play back in, and he just uses his speed to get away from Marlon Brown there. Yeah, like that. Okay. Excellent uh, running skills exhibited there by Dabby Dawson. Dawson just shy of 30 yards on the day now. Second down and four. The ball is resting at the 16. He'll keep it on the ground to Dawson again. Randy Gray almost able to bring him down in the backfield, but not able to, but no gain on the play by Dawson. There's Randy making a good play inside, getting penetration, and hauling down Dawson for really uh, just a, a yard gain. Third down and two from the 18-yard line. This is one the Cougs need to get some pressure on. I think that uh, you'll see Wyoming throwing the ball for the first down here. Cougars show perhaps a blitz to Carranzas, and now they drop back out of it. Carranzas to throw quickly, and pass is caught. And it's good enough for the first down. Sean Wiggins making the catch. Had to wait for a second to make sure it was indeed a good catch. Well, here you see Wiggins run his little flat route. Stretches out, and we can't see if he trapped that ball or it hit the ground. Ledbetter seems to think so, but uh, the officials right there made the call. And it's first down by Wyoming. Gain of four for Carranzas on that eighth first down for the Cowboys. Cougars, on the other hand, have just three. Very and Jones in the back. A nice catch by Wiggins, and he stretched out. Very tough play to defend there as the Cowboys picked up the first down. Cougars show the blitz this time. Now Carranzas audibles and sends the black backs out. Uh, Dawson going into the slot. Carranzas wants to throw, and he's hit hard from the blind side. I think that's Lewis Bush again. Lewis Bush showing excellent speed from his outside linebacker position, and those are the ones where he's just licking his chops. He's untouched as he comes in, and all he can see is number 18's numbers. I swear. Not looking at him, too. These are the ones that hurt. Oh, hello there, Tom. How are you? Nice job. Cougars again on the right defensive call from the, from the coaching staff. We need to get the ball back here. We need a good defensive series for the Cougs. Second and 16 now. As you see, Carranza is calling the signals. Jones, the lone setback. Two wide receivers, and the Cougars are going to be outside. Marlon Brown jump. Free play for the Cowboys, and Wiggins couldn't hang on. That one was too Sean Wiggins out of Robbins, Illinois. Had nine catches coming into this game, and has made a couple of catches. That one was a free play as Marlon Brown had jumped offside. Wiggins, four catches for 67 yards so far. Just a little over anxious again. The Cougs trying to put pressure, trying to make yeah, something defense, happen on defense. Offside, five yard penalty, still second down. One of the things, Cleet, that, that would have been natural for Washington State with the national TV game against USC coming up next week, coming off the Pac 10 opener, a win at home, 41 3, big win over Oregon State, was the chance of a letdown for these Wyoming Cowboys. Cougars haven't exactly looked flat, but they haven't been crisp, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Well, Wyoming's shown that they're not a bad football team either. Carranzas to Dawson on the draw, and he is wrapped up and brought down from behind by Kirk Westerfield, who makes the tackle. As the Cougars in this high altitude, shuffling the defensive line, there's Westerfield out of Cuyahoga Benton High School, Benton City, 6'7", 265 pound sophomore. You see the number 75, Tony Savage is in the lineup. Good to see that he's able to play it. The ankle that is holding up. Good to see that big body in the middle there. Third down and six. Back split behind Carranzas. Cougars with the blitz coming. Cowboys pick it up. 
Nice defensive play by Washington State. It was intended for Gordy Wood, and it was Alvin Dunn coming in to get a hand on it. Well, that's a good job by the Cougs. They've got uh, Carranza's thinking a little bit. And he was back there. You can tell his, you can tell his feet are moving around. He's a little bit nervous, and he hurries the throw a little bit. Just behind Gordy Woods, and uh, they'll have to punt. Might have had the ball deflected a bit by one of the Cougar defensive linemen streaking in. Cougars come after Fleming this time, and he gets the kick away. And it's C.J. Davis who falls down, bubbles it, can he cover it? Cowboys might have the ball. They do. the Cougar offense. Here you see CJ and he's not playing that wind and misjudges me. You can see a shadow of the sun's right in his eyes there. And good hustle by Wyoming. He's number 91. Greg Peters recovering the ball. Well that hurts. They had finally had stopped Wyoming had a chance to get the ball back and those are just the special teams mistakes that you can't you just can't have you expect to win games. Each team has turned it over once. Cowboys with the football first and ten on the Cougar 21. Bennett in the backfield behind Carranzas, who has Wiggins, Gilmore, Wood, and Wells as the wide receiver. This is the tight end, Wood, on the catch, and he gets inside the 20 and is dragged down by John Diggs. Carranzas there, sensing the blitz, uh, sends Gordy out in the flat there, and just a real quick release, and that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of check that you've got to make up there as a quarterback when you when you sense that, that certain things are, are being done to, to rattle you. So far this season, Washington State's defense has become a big play defense. And they need one of those big plays right here. They trail the Cowboys seven to nothing and Wyoming in good shape right now. Second and six from the 17 of Washington State. You saw the problems with the exchange and it was Peter Gunn who was gunned down in the backfield. Those are the ones as a quarterback, you turn around and you get hit and you don't know what's happening and you just hope the ball's not on the ground. I don't know who's wrong there. I, I would suspect that the uh, gun is wrong. Oh, sure, it's always the running That's back, right. never the quarterback. Huh? <laughs> but on, on the other hand, it's a good play for the Cougs and uh, this will force uh, Wyoming to throw deep into their end zone, I think. Carranzas will throw as Bennett out of the backfield over the middle, and the ball is caught. Lewis Bush on the coverage of Melvin Wells, the young man out of Seattle and Spokane Falls Community College. And we are going to get our first look at Sean Fleming as a field goal kicker. He's been on to punt a couple of times, but he'll try for three here. Well, here's Carranzas dropping back, and he's trying to get the delay route to the back over the over the side there, over the middle, and uh, Lewis Bush playing good position defense makes a tackle. Fleming from 32 yards out, and he's got it. Ten nothing. Cowboys lead the Cougars. 9:29 left to play in the first half. You're watching Cougar Football '89 on Prime Sports West. But name it, Cleet Casper, back at War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, where the Cowboys of Wyoming have a 10 to nothing lead over Washington State, courtesy of that 32-yard field goal by Sean Fleming. The Fleming leg really provided both those, uh, both on the punt and on the uh, field goal, and so you have to give him more than three points for that uh, for that field goal there. Cougars need to get a good drive going here together. They need to get a good good return if they get any return at all. And, and drive the ball down the field and change the tempo of this game because right now it's in Wyoming's favor. Fleming lofts this one high. Desmond Clayton won't bring it out. Pryor tells him, just sit down for a while. And that was one a good the decision. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's interesting is, as you take a look at the scoring drive, just nine yards covering the four plays. Under two minutes, a, a boost by the defense that keeps the Cowboys out of the end zone and holding the three. But one of the things that Mike Price had hoped to do was to get Garcia the snaps, get a lead, and then get Mike Pattinson, the true freshman out of Moscow, some snaps as the backup quarterback. But when you're down 10 to nothing, it makes it a little tougher to do that. A lot of work to do. 
Garcia to Broussard, and Broussard across the 20, and is able to fall forward to about the 24-yard line. Dorel Drake, the freshman making his first start, in on the stop. Here's a look at the bruiser, who is up to 24 yards on the day now. Well, this is, a, again, like I said, a big, important drive, and I think we'll see the Cougars intent to to get a little bit at a time here and not go for the home run ball, bringing Stallworth out and going to the two tight end offense. Calvin Griggs, one wide receiver, C.J. Davis the other, and the double tight end look with Carr in the backfield. Carr will get the ball. He'll try it outside, and there is nothing at all there. Dorell Drake again in on the stop, and Dorell does a little celebrating after running Paul Carr outside. That's interesting that the Cougars send Carr outside because you talk to the Cougars and they say Paul Carr is... Probably the best blocker among the running backs and a good inside runner. He's not that good outside. Well, you're only as good as the people making the blocks up front. And Wyoming's coming up and basically throwing nine guys on the line of scrimmage. And they're saying, Aaron Garcia, you're going to have to beat us today because we're not going to let Broussard and Carr do it to us. Griggs, Davis, and Stallworth the trip's right look with Garcia. And everybody up on the line of scrimmage for the Cowboys. Garcia wants to throw, steps forward, gets away from one man and gets the first down. Nice effort by Aaron Garcia as Ron Dean finally runs him down, but Garcia showing some quick feet to get away from the tackler, about get away from Willie Wright about five yards away. Well, yeah, here you see, again, Wyoming up with uh, almost 11 people on the line of scrimmage, and Garcia makes an excellent move right there, and here he just tucks the ball away and gets that first down. That's one of the risks you take of throwing everybody up on the line of scrimmage as a defense, but uh, there's not much support after that first wave. Big play for the Cougs. They needed that first down. Rodney Scott in in the slot position, along with Paul Carr in the backfield. Garcia is going to have to run it again. And is able to pick up about another five or six yards before Craig Schlichting finally brings him down with the first shot from behind. Well, again, excellent job by Garcia keeping his cool and them bodies flying around picked up about five yards there you know what they're trying to do is is run the play action here without actually setting up the, the play action run with the run now they're getting good pressure on garcia what do you do here quick screen over the middle what, what are the options i think you need to rely on some of your your players that are not uh, necessarily the street credit so let's get the ball to wellston let's get the ball to rod olson something like that garcia doesn't like what's called him. he'll go over and talk to mike price about it Time out for the Cougars, 7.02 left to play first half. Cowboys 10, Washington State nothing. You're watching Cougar football on Prime Sports Northwest. Washington State trying to get their longest sustained drive of the day. Steve Broussard on the Cougar sidelines, and we saw him roll an ankle earlier, and he is being treated by... Brian Sanders, Cougar trainer right now, who was on this trip with ice on his ankle as Craig Schlichting is able to stop the Cougar offensive thrust on that play as Paul Carr tried to take it up the middle. So it's going to be interesting for Washington State if Broussard is out. Carr, Rodney Scott, and, and Aaron Garcia in the back of this. Mike Price looks on. Well, that definitely changes up the, the game plan. Obviously, you've got the Pac-10 leading rusher on the sidelines. And uh, now you have to rely on Aaron Garcia, I think, to, to move this team. Third and four, the handoff goes to Carr. Can he get outside? His second effort is a bit shy of the first down marker. Paul Wallace coming up from the cornerback spot to make the hit. And the Cougar offense is like, let's go for it. Come on, we only need about a half a yard. They say, let's go. Paul Wolf, one of the captains, says to Mike Price, come on, let us go for it. And let's see if they do. Nope, here comes... Rob Myers, there's Broussard being taken out the sideline. It looks like it's not so much the uh, ankle. You can see the wrap around his left hamstring, and that's been bothering him a little bit uh, all week. And uh, that's not something you want happening to your best back. So Broussard with the ankle early in the hamstring that, as Cleet mentioned, has been bothering him for a week. Myers to kick it away. Driving kick, Merrill will make the catch, it is 11, and come forward. He loses a couple of tacklers, and is finally run out of bounds by Chris Morton, who shoves him, and we're going to get a flag or not. Haven't seen one yet, the Cowboys were certainly asking for one. 
<laughs> He's all right. Little little track and cinders over there in the arms. It's good for those wide receivers. So the Cowboys will start on their 23. Played something we talked about last week against Oregon State, something that this Washington State coaching staff has done very well is make a lot of adjustments at halftime and change things around. And they are certainly in a situation in this game, given the what Wyoming's done on defense and some of the injury problems, they are going to have to make some changes. Carranza's 87 yards through the air, 7 out of 10 so far. Make it 8 out of 11 as Wood, the tight end, makes the catch and gets out to about the 28-yard line. Chris Moton, Dan Grayson, in on the tackle for the Cougars. That was a nice conservative play. Again, a good first down passing play where you got the possession passing working. You got Gordy Wood slipping out on a delay. Nice soft hands, turns it up and gets his yardage. Pretty strong tackle there by Grayson and Moten. There you see the ground level view of Carranzas, the sophomore out of Great Falls, calling the signals. Makes the pass. Now the switch pass to Dwayne Jones, and Jones eludes Phil Garabedian and gets the first down. Garabedian had him dead to rights behind the line of scrimmage, but couldn't make the play. Nice move by Jones, and he gets the first down. Well, not a good tackle by Garabedian. Instead of coming up and really delivering the blow, he, uh, here you see Garantz is rolling right and throwing back. And you'll see Garabedian set his feet and uh, just lost the legs. All the strength went out of that. That's one of those situations where you've got to come and be the attacker. Gain of eight on the play. Carranzas with a long count this time. And it's even on the ground. This is Benna who is wrapped up. Marlon Brown got a hand on the shoulder pad, enough to slow him down. And it was Ledbetter and Garabedian coming in to finish things off. So second down and eight, as Benna is credited with a couple of yards on that carry. Benna, a senior out of Omaha, he too coming off surgery, had an injured year last year where Dwayne Jones started 10 games in his place. Benna and Gunn in the backfield for the Cowboys on the second and eight play. Inside of 345 left to play in the first half. Audible by Carranzas as he sends Gunn into the slot, and I think he took too much time. I think you're right. So we'll set up a second and 13. Now coming into this game, the Cowboys talked about the fact that Bobby Prestress still two or Peter Rowe would see some action at quarterback, and in fact, Peter Rowe might see some action for Coach Paul Roach at quarterback if the Cougars were able to get good pressure. They feel that Rowe is the better scrambler, but so far, Carranzas has come in here and said, hey, this is my job. There you see the penalties so far in this contest. There you hear the line of scrimmages. Carranzas wants the home run ball and overthrows Melvin Wells. Roosevelt Noble with him step for step. We got a flag in the backfield at the feet of Carranza. Yeah, there was definite hold there on 97. Tim Downing as he's put excellent pressure on, and uh, the referee is standing right there and dropped the flag right in his face. So this will push things back even further for the Cowboys. As you see, Roosevelt Noble had the 61-yard interception return for the touchdown against Oregon State. Senior out of Sunnyvale, California, St. Francis High School. Roosevelt, we need another one here. Here's the official call. Holding. Gets the offense. Ten yard penalty, still second down. The ball back on the 24, and they have to get out to the 48. So call it second and 24. Greg Brown. A sophomore speedster out of Houston in the lineup at wide receiver for the Cowboys. They went to a draw in this situation before. Let's see if they do it again. Dawson moving a couple of steps to the backfield. Carranzas will throw, rolling a bit, pressure, and gets away and finally loses his balance. Did a nice job to get away from a couple of would-be tacklers and got back to about the 15-yard line. 
and the Cougar defense starting to get some extra pressure now on Carranzas. Well, I think one of the things that happened is Wyoming coaching staff has got a little confidence that they can move the ball on these, and they're starting to throw the longer routes, and we're trying to pick up the first down there. Excellent pressure by the Cougar front four, Lewis Bush containing Carranzas and not letting him get to that outside corner so that he could uh, see downfield. Good job by the defense, and the Cougs need to get the ball back here and get a score before halftime. And Carranzas didn't like what he saw as the Cowboys came out in the wrong formation. It's third and 31, and he wanted to make sure they have the right call. That's the first time out used by the Cowboys. So with 2.46 left to play in this first half, Washington State has one timeout left, so they will try to get the football. And how important is it to get some sort of score on the board before halftime when you've been down the entire first half like this? Well, I, I think one of the things that's happened here is Wyoming stopped the clock for them, so that's one good thing in the, in the plus column, I guess, as far as getting the ball back. And also, they've, they've got to make a decision. Are they going to actually go for the first down here? Or are they going to run the ball and let that clock run? I would look for them to go back to the draw like they've done so many times before on third and long and, and let that clock run instead of giving the ball back. Join us next week at this time as the Cougars will take on the USC Trojans next Sunday, October 1st at 5 o'clock, right here on Prime Sports Northwest, Washington State against USC. Pac-10 game number two for the Cougars. Well, here you see Karantzis in the huddle, and he's making a... One of the things kind of interesting that I always like to look for when a quarterback's in the huddle is how quickly he gets the play out. Uh, if you see him come out of, the, out of the huddle real quick, that usually indicates it's a run. Daryl Perkins, a 5'11", senior out of Aurora, Colorado, in the backfield, number 33 for the first time for the Cowboys, along with Steve Bennett. That's Perkins going in motion. Karantzis to throw. We got a flag. Brown with the sack. And the fumble, and Washington State might have covered the football. We've they got have flags everywhere, Let's though. See where the flag is. Is it? It's again in the spot where we've seen offside on Washington that's State. That's right, and that's what I'm worried about. The Cougars think it's against Wyoming, though, because they have come, the defense has come off the field, and it's Cougar football. Let's hear the call. Here we go. Karras has dropped back, and you can tell he's looking to the right side. Doesn't feel the defensive player. I think it's Marlon Brown. It comes from the backside. Yeah, you can see him wrap it up, knock the football loose. Randy Gray, Randy with Gray the is recovery. right there for the recovery. Big play for the Cougs, and that'll change the momentum. Just like last week when Oregon State made the mistake late in the first half in their own end of the field. Now the Cougars have the opportunity to go in here and score quick. Talked about the big play defense. They come up with one there. Garcia with first and goal at the end. Oh, reverse, reverse to Stallworth. He has Husby out in front. Touchdown, Washington State. The Cougars are on the scoreboard. The reverse, Tim Stallworth. They did the same thing to the other side of the field against the Idaho Vandals, and it worked to perfection this time. And Stallworth had John Husby out in front leading the way. You know, it was kind of funny because I was thinking, you know, pretty soon if they run out of more running backs, we'll see Stallworth in the backfield, all uh, Tim Brown of Notre Dame. Here you see him coming around on the reverse from his slot position and uh, uses his blocker well and just noses into the corner of the end zone. Good job of running there by Stallworth here from the end zone angle. Again, the flow going the other way. Excellent job following the blocker and just finding that little seam to get to the corner and uh, knock the pylon down. That's a touchdown for the Cougs. Jason Hansen on to attempt the extra point. And it is good, as you expect. 60th extra point in a row for Jason Hansen. So it's pretty amazing between Jason Hansen and Sean Fleming. 125 consecutive PATs. That's not too bad. Cougars have pulled within three on the one play, eight yard touchdown drive. The defense comes over with the turnover again that sparks the offense into the end zone. Now, if you're Aaron Garcia, you ran it into the end zone, but does it give you a little confidence that you got something on the board before halftime? That's right. There's life in the offense now, and you really see it come along here with the defensive attitude also. That this just stimulates the entire thing. Here we got uh, the Cougar drive. It's uh, eight yards on one place. All we're taking it in, and the uh, lap time was six seconds. Those are the kind of drives I like. Defense doesn't like those, though. The defense gets tired, but they caused the, they was actually, actually the defensive score there with Marlon Brown forcing the fumble, and uh, that one may come back to haunt the, the Colorado, or I'm sorry, the Wyoming uh, coaching staff. Again, we were talking about do they run the ball? Do they run the clock down? They decided to throw the ball and uh, had a big play that went against them. 
Here's Mr. Hansen walking it off, and we'll see how far he can put it, see if he can put it out of the end zone again. Well, he'll be kicking into that wind a little bit, and what he has a tendency to do in this situation is try to really hang it high and let the wind hold on to it. We'll see what he does here. He gets it high, and it goes into the end zone, and Daddy Dawson will just let it bounce. So the Cowboys will start it, first and 10 on their own 20. Tom Carranza's bringing the offense back as you get a good look at the sophomore from Meade High School in Spokane, Jason Hansen. Got to fix that here for TV. <laughs> Kicker. Outstanding student, a 4.0 student in high school, and he admits that football has taken up a little bit of time and detracted a bit from the studies, and I think it's probably brought the GPA down to about 3.8. You know, that's about what summer school was, right? right? That's right. Dwayne Jones, the lone setback for Carranza's. Cougars showing a bit of a blitz as Mark Ledbetter's bouncing around. Carranza's with the drop, pressured again, gets it off and drop. It was intended for Sean Wiggins, and he couldn't hang on. Well, again, here we've got Wyoming throwing the ball, having incomplete passes, stopping the clock. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, the coaching staff feels they've got to air it out. Their ground game has been pretty successful. I would think that they'd be pretty happy with uh, what they've got so far. But, Dabby Dawson uh, leading the way on the ground with those 33 yards. Dwayne Jones is in the backfield here. Four wide receivers over the middle. This is Jones making the catch, and he has stopped shy of the first down. Nice to, defensive play by Washington State to keep the Cowboys from getting that first down. I'd like to see Washington State take a timeout here. I think that you could force uh, Wyoming to, to throw the ball again for the first down. They come out in a quick huddle. No offense. Uh, or I'm sorry, no huddle. Quick offense. But the, the Cougars are hoping it's a no on. Yeah, that's right. Freudian slip. Jones again in the backfield. Carranza's quick toss. Throws the out, and it's caught by Wiggins. First down. Nice route run by Wiggins there as he knew where the marker was. Got a yard behind it. Lewis Bush, Ron Ricard on the coverage. Well, good job of Wiggins finding the first down yardage and uh, hooking up in the flat. Carranza's drilled it in there, and that was a good play for Wyoming. Uh, I... I I'm wondering why they're doing this. I don't know if it's just a two-minute offense that they've already got pre-designed, that they've got the plays pre-selected or what. Clock running, 145 left play first half. Carranza's rolls, throws, and it's intercepted. Roosevelt Noble, his second interception of the year, third of his career, and the ball is on the 45-yard line, and the Cougars, with maybe another 10 yards, they're right Jason Hansen field goal range, chance to tie it up and again the defense. Roosevelt Noble. Does an excellent job showing his great athletic ability as here we see Carranza is rolling out. And Roosevelt Noble is going to close on this ball like an all pack 10 corner. You see him step right in front of the receiver. I think that's Wells, an excellent job. And Cougars again have the ball in field position where they've got to be thinking uh, at least three points here. Third turnover by the Cowboys. And by how things have changed. A minute ago it was 10 to nothing, Cowboys. Now the Cougars with an opportunity to take the lead before intermission. Carr, the lone setback. Garcia to throw. Has time. To Rod Olson, the tight end, who gets down to the 41-yard line. See, the, the Cougars now running their two-minute drill. Lining it up quickly. Everybody's scrambling to their position. And I think, again, they also have the pre-designated plays that are, go along with this package. Call it second and six for the 41. Carr stays in the block. Home run ball. Davis... No catch. Davis was running behind Paul Wallace, and it actually gave Wallace a little bit of a shove, but nobody was going to catch that football. Garcia there going for the home run, laid it up, tried to let CJ run underneath it. Just wasn't to be, but that stops the clock, allows the Cougars to regroup here a little bit and, and think about what they want to do here. They want to move the, down, the ball down the field and short 10, 15 yard. Uh, passes, but being able to get out of bounds, and that's what Wyoming's trying to guard against. Third and six, the ball is on the 41. If they gain nothing, it would be a 58-yard field goal attempt by Hanson. He's kicked a 58-yarder against BYU. Here comes Gotta the get rid of it. Looking for Carr. Nice move by Garcia to get away. Has a receiver, Griggs. It's caught by Griggs at the 10, down to the 5. A flag. Garcia was beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. And that's lost it down. The Cougars are going to have to punt. They are now out of field goal range because Garcia did the nice job to scramble but didn't know where the line of scrimmage was. We also have an ineligible receiver. Yeah, it, it could have been either one of those where you see Garcia scrambling around back there doing an excellent job of getting free from the blitz. And uh, everybody on the offensive line. Downfield against the offense. 
Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty, still third down. So with it being an ineligible receiver, it goes to the Cougar benefit at least because they get another play. But well, you see Garcia trying to get the screen off there and it would have been an excellent play if he could have made it. Does an excellent job finding Griggs. Just too bad that it was called back because, uh, and again, you can't fault the, the offensive lineman hustling down to make a block. That's what they're taught to do. Uh, again, tough break goes against the Cougs. The official's right on it, though. I think it's probably a good call. And looking back on that, Garcia did get rid of the football about a yard behind a lot of scrimmage, so it was a good pass. Too bad. Effectively, though, the Cougars not in field goal range for Hanson against this win, you wouldn't think. Garcia to throw, has time. Now pressured by Donahue. Gets a block from Garmin and finds Olsen. The tight end gets out of bounds at the 37. Now, although they're shy of the first down, they are in field goal range. 36 seconds left to play in the first half. So a bit of a risk if you send Hanson out and he misses. Wyoming gets it with pretty decent field position, but not much clock to work with. Well, you got to take a shot at it. That's what he's there for. He's proven that he can drill these things. So give his the strong right foot a chance. So be a 55-yard attempt. Hanson, in his career, five out of six from over 50 yards, four for four this year. Has a 53, a 52, and a 58-yarder to his credit. Out of the hole to Rob Myers. Nope. He didn't get all of this one. The wind holds it up, and it's short. About five yards short, and it looked like it might have been a shade off to the right. So Hanson can't come through, and you see his disappointment. He looked to be having a little bit of problems during warm-ups. He was kicking everything low and having a hard time getting it up in the air. That time he was able to get it up in the air, but it just didn't have enough momentum to drive through. So 31 seconds left in this first half. And the Cowboys, keep in mind, have a very fine field goal kicker in Sean Fleming. He's got the win, and he has the win to his back. Exactly. Jones, the lone back for Carranza's. First and 10 on the 38. 31 seconds and two timeouts for the Cowboys. And the quick out, the catch by Ted Gilmore. They the seat looks tough. And it is a, they're going to stop the clock, however, to move the sticks forward. Exactly a 10 yard gain. Now credit with 11 now, they spot the ball at the 49. Clock moving with 22 seconds to go in this first half. Wyoming leading it 10 to 7. Draw. Draw to Jones. We got a flag. He's got tons of running room and is finally brought down at the 25. But let's see what the flag is. Well, we got to hope the officials kill one of their drives, too. 12 seconds on the clock now. See the Cowboy fans waiting in anticipation, and this one will come back, holding it against the, the folks. Well, the officials are having a great day. They have been a, a factor. They've been the, the ball leads. Yeah, uh, Holding against the offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. As a fan, you hate to see the referees take control of games like this and make the calls that really stop the momentum of, uh, of the offense. But uh, fortunately for that, for the Cougs, uh, that one went against them. And the draw using time up, so down to 12 seconds. So now really, you have one play to try to get into field goal position. And in fact, the clock running now, so they're not even going to have another play. This will be it for the half. They won't get any field goal opportunity for Fleming. Going deep down the side, man. And that's the end of the first half, as that pass falls incomplete. So an interesting first half. Wyoming looked very good early, and the Cougar defense changes things. It's 10-7. Wyoming leading Washington State at halftime. They're watching Cougar football, 89, on Prime Sports Northwest. You see a quick look at the stats, and we'll get a chance to reflect some of those as the Cougars will have the football. This is prior with it as the ball bounced on the one. He goes down at the 10, and we've got yet another flag. The penalties were obviously a big factor in the first half as the Cougars were penalized seven times for 40 yards. The Pokes four times for 35 yards, and we have a flag on the, the kickoff to start the second half. I think we got a clip. So the Cougars are going to start with the ball probably on the five-yard line. As you see, Pete Gosar made the tackle. Some bad news for the Cougars on the offensive side of the football. Steve Broussard is in sweats and a t-shirt on the sideline. The hamstring injury too much for Broussard to play in the second half. Well, you got to think that uh, the 
Washington State coaching staff is uh, saving Broussard a hamstring. Is this not something that gets better? You have to rest it. And he won't see any action in the second half here for the Cougars. Broussard, six carries, 23 yards in that first half. Paul Carr, five carries, 20 yards. He's in the backfield. We'll also see Rodney Scott. A problem on the exchange, but Carr bounces outside. Has running room across the 20. And he's hand-collared under the neck at the 25-yard line as Daryl Harris made the stop and the Cougars get the first down. Excellent job by Carr. Busting the play in the backfield, running into Garcia and uh, making that all on his own. And breaks it out for a good gain and gives the Cougs a little breathing room. You know, on the kickoffs, it must be, on the punts, it must be very tough looking into that sun because they have really misjudged both the long punt and the kickoff. 21 yards for Carr, six foot, 202 pound sophomore out of Interlake High School in Bellevue. Garcia, four out of nine, throwing in the first half. Presser steps up, hit, gets away. Quick feet, gets hit hard, and is brought down finally at about the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. Boy, he's showing me something as far as just being an athlete back there, being able to stay alive. Cougars looking to do a little play action, set up something deep. Excellent pressure by Wyoming. Steps up, jumps over. Little pirouette. Oof, it's stuck in the chest, but uh, he's not hurt. So there's there's the bruiser. You can see him right there. He will not be back. And a flag against the Cougars, an illegal block against Washington State. So yet another penalty against Washington State. Well, again, we continue where we left off in the first half. The officials not being afraid to throw those flags uh, against either team. And uh, they've just really taken a lot of the momentum out of this entire football game. Uh, Good thing. Pointing to see. Against the offense, half the distance, still first down. So half the distance marches it back to the 14-yard line is where they will mark the ball. Actually, it should be the 13, and they do finally respot it at the 13. So first and 23 from the 13 for Aaron Garcia and the Cougars, who had just 109 yards of total offense in the first half. 42 through the air, 67 on the ground. Two wide receivers left, one to the right for Aaron Garcia. Hand off the car. Again, pretty decent running room. He gets out near the 20. One of the keys to Wyoming's defense here is to see Paul Carr is that they've had excellent run support for their secondary and that I think as an adjustment at halftime that the coaches for Washington State had to make was making sure that the wide receivers recognize that they're a part of that run scheme also and they've got to stay on their people to allow people like Paul Carr to break free. Carr with the highest rushing total of his young Cougar career as he has 48 yards now. Second and 16 from the 19. That's Rodney Scott in motion. Garcia wants to throw over the middle. It's Stallworth who makes the catch. Stallworth's second catch of the game. Daryl Harris on the coverage. There you see Stallworth. He came across. You'll see Aaron drop back. No backs in the backfield. Waiting for Stallworth to break free. And that's a dangerous pass because there's a lot of people in the middle. But good throw and catch by Stallworth Garcia team there. Gain of seven on the play, third and nine from the 21 for the Cougars. Trips to the right, Ron Young, C.J. Davis, and Tim Stallworth. You hear the crowd getting into it a bit. Garcia steps up, wants to throw the hump, home run ball for Young. And it is almost intercepted. And the Cowboy fans wanted offensive pass interference as Young gave a little shove to Ivor Samilton, but it was after the ball was gone, so Rob Myers back on the punt. Excellent coverage that time by the defensive secondary. There was good pass protection, but uh, Samuelson did a good job at maintaining his inside position and not letting him get behind him. Fourth down, Cougars got a punt. Meyer set to kick it away. A couple of deep men. Tim Morrow back. Myers gets it away. Nice driving kick, and this will be... Mara making the over-the-shoulder catch at the 17, heading all the way back to the 15, and again finds the running room. Nice spin move, and finally goes down. Mara is an exciting young kick returner. 17 yards on the return. That was an excellent return by Mara. You'll see he catches the ball over the shoulder. Excellent punt. 
And the Cougars, you see them breaking down, not, not being in their lanes. Uh, there was a slip, might have been a clip. But a uh, real good job by Mayor bringing the ball back upfield. Pretty good field position for Wyoming. Well, Bobby Frescus is in the lineup at quarterback now. The 6'190 pound sophomore left-hander out of Damien High School in Laverne, California. Hands it off to Davy Dawson, who breaks it outside. Roosevelt Noble with the tackle at about the 42. So Frescus, 8 out of 18. No interceptions, no touchdowns. Well, Dabby Dawson so on, showing what uh, what made him such an effective back last year was setting up those blockers and making a good inside cut and picking up about eight yards. That's a good running play on first down and lets your offense uh, gives you a whole bunch more opportunities and opens up the playbook for Coach Roach. Wayne Jones in the backfield now, the long back behind Frescas, the left-hander to throw. Pass is complete to the tight end, Wood. Breaks a tackle into Cougar territory, down to the 41. Well, here Wyoming splits out Gordy Wood in an almost a slot position, and it's just a quick read by Frescas. Drops, delivers, and uh, catches Gordy Wood, the tight end, in the little seam, and he does a good job running with the ball afterwards. So Wyoming has picked up real quick with their offense and is moving the ball effectively. Dawson, the lone setback, four wide receivers with Wood lined up as a wide receiver. Frescas hands off to Dawson on the draw, and Dawson slips away, and the Cowboys have come up fired up on offense as they move the ball down to the 36, maybe the 35 of Washington State. Well, I uh, I like the, the play calling on uh, Wyoming's uh, side of the ball. They've got to mix in a little quick pass, a draw, run the ball outside. They're giving the Cougars a little bit of everything, and uh, that's what makes successful drives is mixing it up. Don't, don't rely on any one thing to get you down the field. Ball on the Cougar 35, Dawson and Jones in the backfield behind Frescas. Here comes the blitz, the pitch, back to Dawson, just got it away, and he is brought down in the backfield by Chris Moton as the Cougars come up with the blitz, and Moton makes the tackle in the backfield of Dawson. So there, the Cougar were bringing about eight people coming hard with the blitz, and uh, they run the option play, which is something I wasn't expecting uh, Wyoming to run, and when you run that option into the teeth of a, a strong safety blitz, it's usually that type of, of loss. So now it sets up a third and ten, and Frescas in a passing situation, long count. Cougars were offside, or did somebody move? Let's see, the flag finally goes. We'll get a chance to let the officials sort it out. Cougars were definitely offside, but the question is, did somebody move on the offensive line? Well, the officials are sitting there talking it over, and uh, I didn't see anybody move. I thought uh, Tony Savage uh, just came across early on the quarterback snap, or snap count. Yep. That's the call. Goes against Cougars again. That's the fifth time we've seen this happen to Washington State. Is that perhaps because of a new quarterback? Against the defense, still third down. As a defensive lineman, you're told to react on the movement of the ball, and Tony Savage is right there next to it. So he's just a little over anxious and jumping across the line of scrimmage. It gives it a third and five instead of third and ten, and uh, I'd look for Gordy Woods here. In addition money, man. to Broussard being out, Jay Langwood has a hit pointer. He will not be back. Frescas to throw, and he was rushed, intended it for Wiggins, but the good pressure, and Frescas got rid of it too soon. Again, we had Lewis Bush coming from his outside linebacker position and putting a real quick pressure on it. I'm impressed with him uh, coming in almost like a Lawrence Taylor type of outside backer. There you see the penalty situation, and the Hankies have been all over the place. Fleming is on to try a 54-yard field goal attempt with the wind behind him. It will be from just inside the left hash mark, and he's got it up. And it is good. Sean Fleming connects. And the Cowboys have stretched the lead to six. Exactly ten minutes to play in the third quarter. Wyoming, 13. Washington State, seven. You're watching Cougar Football on Prime Sports Northwest. Here we have Fleming uh, drilling that 50-plus yard field goal through, and he had a lot of a lot of room to spare on that one. So Fleming with his second field goal of the game, and Wyoming now leading it by six. Fleming connects for 54, and he will kick it off. A 
again to reiterate, Steve Broussard out with the hamstring injury. And he will not be back for Washington State. And Jay Langwood, the defensive back, is out with a hip corner. He will not play. Fleming hangs this one way up the side, trying to get that sun again. And this is Desmond Clayton who gets out to about the 16 is all. Wyoming doing a nice job on kickoff coverage. Excellent coverage by Wyoming. People stay in their lane knowing where the ball's going, and that's a good kick down in the corner. Tough to return out of there. Well, bud, we need to get a drive going here. We need to stop making the penalties. We need to get a nice, consistent 80-yard, 80-plus yard, 80 plus yard drive uh, happening. Here's Wyoming's 28-yard, six-play drive with Fleming hitting the 54-yard field goal that looked like it had probably 10 to 20 yards left on it. Aaron Garcia will try to get the Cougar offense going again. Paul Carr in the backfield for Washington State. Three wide receivers. Now Carr going in motion. Garcia to throw on first down. His receiver was covered, flushed out again. Now he throws it away, and it was hit. And we got a flag roughing the passer call, I believe. And I'm not so sure that's a good call because it looked like he got a part of the ball. It was Tom Williams, the true freshman, and now they're calling intentional grounding on Garcia. Unbelievable. Well, I thought his arm was hit, and that's why the ball got nowhere. I can't agree with that call at all. He's under pressure. He's hit while he's making his throw off. Would have been intentional grounding by the offense. That's a loss of down. Second down. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out well, here's the Garcia's play, hit. And Garcia's trying to find Stallworth over the middle. He has pretty good time. Can't find anybody, so he's going to scramble out the side. You know, the guy's got his hands all over him, and he tries to make the throw. The referee's saying that there was no one near the ball, I think, as far as his judgment. But me and Mike Price got to disagree with that call. Second and 25 from the three. The Cougar offense has been in this situation a number of times today. Carr able to get out of the end zone. Boy, that could have been a safety as he was hit behind the end zone line. And Ron Dean finally brings him down in the secondary at about the 15-yard line. Well, that's a little bit of a risky call down there given that uh, counter. Uh, giving that counter handoff back to Carr's five yards back in the uh, end zone, but he made a good job of it, ran hard, and gave the Cougars a little breathing room there. Carr had a good first down here. Though. Carr up to 58 yards now. It'll be a third and 15 situation from the 13-yard line. Cowboy crowd trying to spur on the defense. Here comes the blitz. It's intended for Doug Wilson, and overthrown. And Aaron Garcia paid for that one as Dorel Drake with the pressure and just flattened Garcia after he got rid of it. There's Tom Everson, former linebacker coach of Washington State. There's Del White giving congratulations to Tom Williams. And there's the Cowboy crowd giving an ovation to their defense. Well, well deserved. Uh, they came with pressure there and forced Garcia to throw that ball a little earlier than he wanted to in an excellent uh, series for the Wyoming defense. Mara and Wallace back deep, and with what Mara's been able to do on returns, Cowboys could have good field position. Myers hangs it high. Mara will make the catch back at the 39-yard line. And this time, the Cougars do a nice job and wrap him up. Only a three-yard return, but Wyoming still will have the football in nice shape. Rob Myers doing an excellent job in the punting today for the Cougars. I think he's got a 45-plus yard average, and that time he hung the ball up well and allowed his team to teammates to get down underneath that. Uh, again, though, Wyoming in pretty good shape. And I think Prescott did a, an excellent job in his first series uh, bringing Wyoming down the field and, and getting three points out of their first drive. We'll see how he uh, stacks up in the second attempt here. Prescott's back at quarterback with two backs behind him. Dawson and Dwayne Jones. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. This is Dawson. At the hole. And a good eight-yard gain on first down, and Cleveland, Wyoming has been able to do that. It makes that second down play call so much easier. Very much easier, and Dabby Dawson is showing me a little bit today. He's had a tough year up to, up to this point, but in this game, he showed uh, real real good qualities as a strong running back with excellent quick, quickness to the outside there. Dawson up to 41 yards on the day. Paul Roach said he felt it would take at least three games for this Cowboy team to come together. They finally won in that third game, and they played well against Washington State. And they get the first down as Dawson goes to the left side. Danny Grayson had on the stop for Washington State. And 
Matt Roosevelt Noble there, but the ball is now in Cougar territory as Dawson gets five more yards. Well, we got Dabby inside, now we got Dabby outside, and uh, again, they're mixing up their play, calling very well, and, and it's tough to defense things when you're back on your haunches trying to decide which way they're going to go with it. There's a good look at Frescas as he makes a call. Cougars are coming with the blitz, and they had a line to move. It was Tyrone Fitchy, the 6'5 junior out of Omaha, who moved as the Cougars started to come with blitz. So it'll set up a first and 15. Well, that's, uh, that's tough to sit in there when you've got a linebacker. Against the offense, still first down. It's tough to sit in there calm and cool when you've got a linebacker as big as Ledbetter trying to come right up to your gap. So. Five yards goes against Wyoming, and maybe the Cougs can turn something out of this, make them throw the ball and get a big play. Two wide receivers, Wiggins in the slot to the left for Frescas, and his quick pass to the outside, and it's incomplete. And that was a page out of the BYU book, a little bit of a pick, and you can see Mike Price complaining about that. There you see right there, he's saying that's a pick, but they wouldn't call it, and Price is getting animated. happy all day with the refereeing and that's something that uh, you know the wide receiver tries to disguise that like he's running around and oh accidentally runs into the DB. Three wide receivers to the right here comes the blitz. The handoff Jones hit immediately. The ball might have popped loose. Cougars say they have it. Let's see. Officials say no. It will be Wyoming football. Marlon Brown said the Cougars had it but he was wishful thinking on Marlon's part. And that'll set up the third and long now for the Cowboys. Had Ledbetter come in there on a delayed blitz and stunted right into the, the hole where the where the draw was supposed to take place. Good call by the Cougar staff. Again, a big play here for them. We need the ball back. We need to get the offense in the field generating some, some yardage going the other way. Right now, Wyoming is in control of this ball game. Jones in the backfield. Gilmore, Wiggins, Wells, the wide receivers with Wood, the tight end, slotted out as a wide receiver. Here comes the blitz. Presses to throw. No chance. Lewis Bush again as he comes in untouched. And Sean Fleming will return to the field, but this time as a punter. Good. I'm glad he's out there as a punter. Lewis Bush, they have uh, elected to let him run free in that uh, pass scheme. And he's been coming with excellent pursuit from his outside linebacker position all day and doing a real good job. He must have three sacks today. Fleming the kick has time and hangs it high. A big driving kick. And this one is headed to the end zone. That was a big, big boot. Tell you what, had they, he had a 90-yard 90 90 kick or 80-yard punt before. Uh, I'll tell you what, that's pretty amazing. I tell you, when he hit that ball with his foot, it sounded like the cannon going off in near the end zone. He really boomed that. I don't think he's too happy, though, because it really is a net probably 45-yard punt where he, uh, where he hit it about 70. He had a 90-yarder earlier this year. Had they been further back in the field, that one would have not quite been 90, but it would have gone a ways. Cougars again starting in bad field position. They have had it on the four, the 18, and now the 20. This is actually their best field position in the second half. This is Carr outside blocker. as a blocker and gets out there about the 27-yard line. Vaughn Henderson in on the stop. Senior out of Denver for the Cowboys. Again, the counter delay. Pulling the guards and tackles from the right side and leading Carr around the left side. Actually, Paul got out there a little bit in front of his blocker, and Bob Garman was out there, big body, kind of waiting for Paul, and need to move him upfield there. Good play, though, on first down. Ron Young, Tim Stallworth, the wide receivers, double tight end look for the Cougars with Carr in the backfield. Carr again, same play, different result. Dorel Drake, Vaughn Henderson in on the stop for the Cowboys. Well, that's a case of, I think, Paul taking it outside when the hole was actually created up inside a little more, and he's looking to run the sideline and get the big gainer, and he's got to be content to get fours and fives right now. It's a big play. I keep saying that for the Cougar offense, but we need to get something generated here, and I look for, look for Stallworth here. You need him. Stallworth in the slot to the right. Ron Young, the wide receiver. Scooter Stogner out to the left. Carr, the lone setback. Garcia to throw. Throwing it out to Stallworth, and there might be some interference. 
Oh, right in front of the Cougar bench, and everybody's all over him. Ron Young can't believe it. Tim Stallworth can't believe it. Stallworth's a little slow getting up. Let's hope it's frustration and not an injury. He's kind of holding his shoulder a bit. He was flat run over. And Mark Smaha taking a look as Rob Myers comes back to punt. Well, again, that's a judgment call back there. And uh, I guess the only judgment I can see is that the referee in the backfield there decides that that ball's uncatchable. Myers to kick. And again, the dangerous Tim Barra, Paul Wallace. Big fake. Carr with it. First down, Washington State. And more. The snap to the up back, Paul Carr, he went left side, was actually hit at the line of scrimmage and did a nice job to keep it going. So the gambler and Mike Price comes out. Okay, here we go. The snap to the up back. Nice fake by Rob Meyer, like it's going over his head. Uh, ooh, good block face mask on Carr, too. Good job of keeping his balance and getting that first down, and that's a big play. Again, we needed something like that. Change the momentum of this ball game. Let's see if we can go down and score six points here. It's really needed. Carr up to 80 yards rushing in the contest. 4.45 left to play third quarter. Cowboys lead it 13-7. Nobody there! C.J. Davis! He will go all the way. C.J. Davis. Touchdown, Washington State. There are no flags. Yeah, baby! The Cowboys caught sleeping as C.J. Davis was out on the left side, his second touchdown no. catch of the year. Well, obviously, there is a mistake in coverage. I don't even know if uh, Wyoming had everybody on the field, but C.J. Davis is left out there without anybody within 25 yards. And you can see him just legging it in for that pylon. He's getting his six. What a turn of events. That's the, that's the thing that you needed here at the end zone. Again, who's in the picture? We got uh, Paul Rhodes on the sideline. He can't make the tackle. You don't see anybody from Wyoming till the very end. Uh, I, I don't know. We have to take a look again. That maybe they didn't have 11 people on the field. Jason Hansen trying to give the Cougars the lead. Myers, the hole. Cowboys came close to blocking it, but Hansen tacks on the extra point, number 61 in a row. It is Washington State, 14. Wyoming, 13. 4.36 left to play third. You're watching Cougar football on Prime Sports Northwest. The Cougars in five plays go 80 yards for the touchdown and take the lead for the first time in this game. 14-13, Washington State with the lead. Aaron Garcia. And there's a young man out of Tacoma, C.J. Davis, who caught his second touchdown pass. He had one against the University of Idaho for Garcia, his third touchdown pass of the year. Minute 55, you see the Cougars with the quick strike. Well, that certainly helps uh, Aaron Garcia's statistics and gives him a little confidence. Excellent job by him having the presence of mind to know him that Wyoming had blown a coverage. Hansen's kick, a high driving kick, and Dawson will field it about five yards deep, and Peter Gunn says sit down. So the Wyoming will come back with the football on their own 20. A little over 20,000, in fact, exactly 20,031 in War Memorial Stadium for this game, and they quieted down just a bit after that touchdown. Battle. Well, the fans are sitting on their hands now. They were really getting into this game, and Wyoming was taking, the, taking it really to the Cougars. And uh, with that one quick pass for 57 yards to Mr. Davis, the Cougars are on top, which is kind of hard to believe because of Wyoming's dominance uh, so far in this game. Garcia now six for 15, 102 yards, and the touchdown. Peter Gunn, the little back behind Frescas, who remains in at quarterback. Frescas rolling and is pressured again and is going to try to throw the home run ball wide open as Wiggins. He makes the catch inside the 40. He turns Roosevelt Noble around. Well, that's a combination of two things. One, Frescas having the presence of mind to find his open receiver down there and Roosevelt Noble just losing contain. He lost where his... Uh, where his man was. Here's Fresca scrambling around, sees him, delivers, and he's out there all by himself. So nice job by uh, Wyoming on that to, again, change the momentum. 43-yard gain on the play. First and 10, ball listed on the 38-yard line. Frescas, the pitch, back to Peter Gunn, who was hit hard by Chris Botana and wrapped up by a host of Cougars. Mark Ledbetter there. Good pursuit. Mike Price, the first guy off the sidelines to pump up the defense. That's right. He's trying to fire him up, especially on a good play like that. Chris Botana took on the lead block, made a good athletic play to get off it and make the tackle. Wiggins now six catches, 113 yards. 
is having an outstanding game. His second super game in a row. He played very well against Hawaii. Pollard loss of a yard. Second and 11. Ben out of the lone back for Frescas. Two wide receivers left, two right. Here comes the blitz. Savage had a hand on him almost before he got the snap, and he's brought down by Lewis Bush. It's interesting that Frescas is in the lineup. They say he is the least mobile of the quarterbacks. And Washington State getting good pressure. Perhaps we'll see Peter Rowe. Uh, I am not exactly sure what the thought process is. Uh, the Cougars have sensed that Frescas is maybe not as mobile and are trying to come through every gap uh, whenever there's a long, long yardage situation other than first down. And it's been very effective in changing the momentum of the draft. Third and 16, ball back on the 43, so a long third down with Gunn and Bennett in the backfield. Gilmore and Wells, the wide receivers left. Frescas wants the throw, has time this time. Throws over the middle, caught. Wide open is Gilmore, stick arms himself away from the middle. And keeps going, and finally out of bounds, inside the 15. So a big, big third down play for the Cowboys and Ted Gilmore. was the case of Wyoming that time picking up the blitz. The Cougars gambled once too often. You see the crossing tenor. There goes Wells, and here comes Gilmore. Gives Roosevelt a shot there. Nice job of running after he catches the ball. And he almost uh, he almost snuck in the end zone on this one. Just pushed out of the bounds, out of bounds by Diggs there. On about uh, the seven, there about the 12 yard line. First and 10 from the 12 now for the Cowboys. Prescott. Ben a move and shift, as does Gilmore. Here comes the blitz again. Frescas loses his balance and gets brought down. And Cougars jumping around as if the football went down, but they're just jumping back on Frescas again. Actually, perhaps the football did come loose. I mean, Jim Cipras, the junior, as you'll see, number 50, cover the football. Ball's down right there when he touches the ground. But uh, the referees didn't pick that up. I think Frescas panicked right there. He looked and saw a blitz and went to plant that back foot to uh, get what he could with it. And ended up losing about three there. Second and 15 from the 17. Frescas well, again. loses the ball again. And it looks like Frescas was able to cover it. As you see Marlon Brown in there helping Frescas up. Problems with the exchange hurting the Cowboys here. Frescas looks nervous in there underneath to me. He's, he's bailing out too soon. He's got to hang in there and believe in his offensive lineman. The Cougs coming with wholesale pressure now that they know it. You see, just doesn't quite get the snap here at all. Lucky for him that uh, he was able to get back on that ball. Dawson and Bennett in the back. Quentin Skittner is the center for the Cowboys. And Frescas perhaps reflecting that nervousness you talked about. Alexa, go with the timeout. Well, he saw him coming again. Garabinian was creeping up there, and uh, he elected to check out and go talk to the coach about it. 121 left to play, third quarter. Cougars, 14. Cowboys, 13. You're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. Bud Namick and Clayton Casper back in Laramie, Wyoming, where the Cougars are clinging to a one-point lead. It's third and 20 from the 22 for the Cowboys, and keep in mind that they have a big weapon in Sean Fleming, who was one down away from trying to give the Cowboys the lead back. I'd look for Dawson here. They're going to split him out in the slot and try to get something quick to him, I think. Cougars faking the blitz, and Frescas wants the throw. Goes for the touchdown into the end zone, and it's overthrown. Cougars into with pretty good coverage. Ron Ricard and, Alvin and John Diggs were there. And it's going to bring on Sean Fleming, this time as a field goal kicker. Last time he attempted a field goal, he kicked the 54-yarder, the longest in his career. Well, the way he kicks the ball, he's got the potential to knock the scoreboard down here. This will be a 39-yard attempt. Actually, they spot it at the 30, so it'll be a 40-yard attempt. And yeah. the Cougars got a piece of it. It was Chris Moton in... Roosevelt Noble's the one, he's the one that's jumping up and down. He came from his outside rush position and got his hands on that ball. It was a high snap. And uh, it took a while to get that ball down, and Roosevelt made the great play. That might be a game-saving play right there for number 37. Here he comes again from his outside. The ball's down, and he just lays out and times it perfectly. 
excellent job by 37. That uh, is a big, big play for the Cougars. Let's see if the offense now can take some of that momentum. And uh, you got to compliment the defense, at least hanging in there tough and not letting them get any points out of that. Prevent the Cowboys from possibly taking the lead. Double tight end, hand off the car, tries it outside, gets brought down from behind. Mitch Donahue into the backfield to make the stop. Well, nothing against Paul Carr, but that's the play that Steve Broussard runs so well is uh, being able to outrun that backside pursuit and get to the corner. He had the corner, but uh, just got dragged down from the backside. Here's Aaron Garcia. Now, we need a couple pass completions out of Aaron Garcia to move this Cougar, field, uh, Cougar team down the field. Loss of a yard on the play. 40 seconds left to play in this third quarter. Washington State leading it by one. Desmond Clayton, high school teammate of Aaron Garcia, wide receiver to the right. Garcia to throw. One at Olsen over the middle and throws this one up for grabs. It's intercepted by Ron Dean. Dean with some running room, and he is still on his feet inside the 25. Knocked out of bounds at about the 23, but hold everything. A flag in the backfield, most likely holding against Washington State, though. And Garcia's checked it out, and he's walking back dejectedly. And apparently that is going to be the call, a hold against Washington State. So the interception will stand. And that was just a case, I think, of, of Aaron Garcia reading Rod Olson wrong. Well, that was a case of Aaron Garcia making a mistake. He saw Rod Olson. He, he have a holding tunnel vision just focused on, Ten yard penalty decline. on Rod Olson. First down. Here's Garcia. He looks out there. Now there's Olson. He's looking at him. He's looking at him. And, you just can't throw that ball into the middle, and I, I really don't know what he was thinking there, but not a well, not a good decision, not a well-thrown ball. Dean credited with 30 yards on the return down to the 24-yard line. There's a look at Ron Dean. Well, now see if Wyoming can take advantage of this big momentum change. Trips left, Carranza's back at quarterback for the Cowboys. Dawson, the lone setback, gets the ball and down to about the 22-yard line. Well, that's interesting that they elected to put Carranza's back in, and I think, again, that the coaching staff is seeing Frescas a little nerve, and they're getting jittery up at the line of scrimmage and want to put their number one guy in to win this ball game. Second and eight from the 22, and that is the end of the third quarter. So Washington State takes the lead in this third quarter, but it's a bit precarious after three quarters of play. Washington State 14, Wyoming 13. You're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. An interesting note going into this fourth quarter of play, the Cowboys have yet to score a point in the fourth quarter this season. They have an opportunity to change that here, however, unfortunately. Second and eight from the 22. Carranzas, the pitch to Dawson, gets a block from Jones Savage with the tackle from behind. Pickup of a couple on the play. And in this fourth quarter, Cleet, Wyoming now working against that win. Uh, It'll be interesting to see here. We got uh, third quarter statistics. Uh, Wyoming with 14 first downs, guards rushing. They've only got 30 yards, but you see the passing yardage. They've rolled up 231 yards, and that's uh, you know that's what their ball game is all about, is getting that ball up and down the field through the air. Bad news for the Cougars. Tony Savage, after having a hand in on that tackle, comes off. Remember, he's missed a, almost a full two games with an ankle injury. Cowboys have elected to call a timeout. Carranzas wants to go over and talk to Paul Roach, as you can see there. Carranzas trying to decide what would work against Washington State on this third and six from the 20 situation. And Washington State having Dan Grayson and John Diggs come over chatting on the defensive end to see what's going on. Don't forget next week. Five o'clock on Sunday, October 1st, it'll be the USC Trojans and the Washington State Cougars, a Pac-10 battle. Washington State 1-0 in the Pac-10 right now. Well, this will be an interesting play call by both sides of the line here. Uh, you can expect WSU to come with their blitzing all-out man-to-man defense in the secondary. 
and I think that uh, Wyoming is sensing that, so uh, if I'm Wyoming, I'm thinking let's, it's third and six, let's make sure that we continue to uh, make this drive effective and maybe give the ball to Debbie Dawson. He's been pretty effective in the second half. Well, if you're Wyoming, you really need to take advantage of the turnover. If you don't, then it causes some major problems. Dawson, 78 yards on the game so far. He's not in there now. So Carranza's we'll 13 out of 17 for 124 yards. Cougars show the blitz. They come. Reverse. That's the reverse. They nope. fake it this time. Gunn's going to throw it. Diggs with the almost interception. He had a hand on it, had the catch, but couldn't get it. Gordy Wood, the tight end, the intended receiver. And we will see Sean Fleming try to get the Cowboys the lead. Well, a little razzle-dazzle again that doesn't dazzle anybody. They fake the reverse here. Moten almost makes a great play in the backfield. Peter Gunn lofts it out there. It's just kind of a jump ball, and they were hoping that Gordy Woods would have the height advantage there, but uh, good play in the secondary by the Cougs. Fleming to try from 37 yards out. Cougars block the last one. They almost get a piece of this one. Plenty of distance, and it's good. The Cowboys take the lead off of the foot of Sean Fleming. Cowboys, 16, Washington State, 14. 14 minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the football game. You're watching the Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. So Sean Fleming with a 37-yard field goal, giving the Cowboys a 16-14 lead, the first points of the season scored for Wyoming in the fourth quarter with this crowd of 20,000 enjoying the Cowboys back on top as you see Desmond Clayton out of Grant High School in Sacramento, the former high school teammate, now college teammate of Aaron Garcia. They hooked up on a number of passes in high school and Cougar fans would like to see them do the same. Only five yards, four plays, a minute six for the Fleming field goal. Clayton makes the catch at the one yard line, trying to bring it back up the gut. It's a block fumble, a football. It's loose. Cowboys. Rod Olson is down on the side, or on the middle of the field. Well, that's the kind of thing that really breaks your back if you're the Cougar. They needed to get their offense back on the field. Instead, Wyoming has another excellent chance to score. Here's Clayton catching the ball. It turns on the speed, and he's got a lane. A good, good blocking. And it looked like he just uh, dropped the ball. It didn't look like there was a real hard throw there. Lewis Bush going after the ball, but Wyoming recovers on their own 24. Excellent opportunity again for the Cowboys. And that's very upsetting. There's been a lot of special teams mistakes here today by Washington State, especially on the, on the kicking game uh, when we're receiving the ball. Wayne Doris, a freshman out of Aurora, Colorado, covered the fumble. Let's take a look again. Clayton actually hit a Cougar blocker and lost his balance, and that's how the football came out. Yeah, I think he kicked Rod Olson and just uh, maybe gave Olson's knee a jolt there, and that's not a good sign for Rod. Olson still down, being attended to by Mark Smaha. Brian Sanders, the Cougar trainers, head coach Mike Price out taking a look, and you can see the senior out of Walnut Creek, California, is certainly in pain, and they're working on that left knee. Doesn't look good, but he's got one of the best in the business, Mark Smaha, taking care of him out there. So the Cougars, who came into this game fifth in the nation in turnover margin, have been hurt by the turnovers. And this is good news, as Olsen is able to get up and support weight on that knee. Olsen comes off, Mike Price runs off, and the burden goes to the Cougar defense. First and 10 from the 25 for the Cowboys. It looks like the burden of this game has been placed firmly on the shoulders of the defense, and this will really test them here. Look for Wyoming to go to the end zone right away. It's uh, something that offensive coordinators love to do is when you've got the defense a little bit down, take a shot at that end zone, especially on first down. It's Carranza's at quarterback. Four wide receivers. Quick drop rolling to the right. Wants to throw, and it is caught. Gordy Wood at the tight end makes the catch inside the 20. Nice diving catch by Gordy Wood there. He runs excellent routes for a big tight end. Here you'll see Carranza's coming around the corner again, moving that pocket, and 
really delivering the ball well on the run. Gordy getting the knee down before he goes out of bounds. Gain of eight on the connection to Wood out of Bremerton Olympic High School. There you see the Cougars have coughed it up a couple of times in the second half, and Wyoming is taking good care of the football. Second and a long two for Ronson. Hands it off to Dawson. He's hit in the backfield by Tim Downing, and Dawson does a nice job to fall forward back to the line of scrimmage. Good job of Downing fighting off his block and making a contact in the secondary. Debbie Dawson finally uh, held for no game. So third and two from the 17. And the defense charged with trying to keep Wyoming to another Sean Fleming field goal attempt. Well, as far as big plays in the game, we've had a couple, but they're not going to get any bigger than this for the Cougar defense. Jones, the lone setback. Cougars don't appear to be coming with any sort of a blitz here. Karantzis drops back. Looks for his tight end. Got him. First down. Wood. Out of 10 catches against Hawaii, seven of them were for a first down, and he's showing that today. Here's Karantzis looking right at us. He's going to, you've got Tony Woods isolated on Grayson, and in this scenario, that's a mismatch. And the first down, big first down for Wyoming. Sixth catch of the day for Wood. He has 47 yards. And the Cowboys with a first and 10 from the 12. Karantzis, you hear the count. Play action fake. Going to Wood again. Knocked away. Nice defensive play by Ron Ricard. Got a hand in there. Ricard able to knock it away. I like the idea that Wyoming's throwing at him a little play action. Get it to your number one man. Ball kind of floated a little bit and allowed Ricard to, to make the adjustment and dive out there and knock the ball away. Cowboys with the second and tenth of the 12 trying to get it into the end zone. They haven't been able to punch it in for a touchdown since five minutes remained in the first quarter. I see him still going to Gordy Wood here. Four wide receivers. Cougars show blitz. A handoff to Jones, and he is inside down near the five-yard line. I'll tell you what. The Cougars almost picked off the handoff. They were coming. I believe it was Mark Ledbetter. Watch number 91 here. He just about had a chance to get the handoff. It's too bad he didn't realize what was happening there. He had a beat on the quarterback and forgot there was a running back down there and almost took that ball away. But uh, on the other end of it, nice little run by Jones, and they get down to the five-yard line and have an opportunity here to get a first down, if not a touchdown. Third down and three. Ball just resting outside the five-yard line. A couple of tight ends now. You see Timber in the backfield along with Peter Gunn now. Look for Wood. The gun, pass up stairs, and it is play action down short yardage formation they're going to leak the tight end to the back of the end zone and that's just a, a jump ball down there and Swenson comes down with it. This is a factor of him just being a little bit taller a little bit bigger and going up and wanting that ball more well the momentum has certainly changed in the favor of Wyoming and got an opportunity to create a big enough lead where the Cougars have to score twice here in order to, to really get back and, and win this game. We have holding against the defense. It will be enforced on the kickoff. Touchdown's good. <laughs> Nothing going right right now. 12-23 left to go in the football game, so Washington State will have plenty of chances on offense, but they really have not been able to move the football that well here in the second half. Out of a hold of Wiggins, Fleming, adds on the extra point. It is Wyoming, 23, Washington State, 14. They're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. So the turnover leads to the touchdown for the Cowboys. Here you see the jump ball. Timing. 
just wasn't there. And uh, Swenson comes down with, uh, with a good catch for a touchdown that uh, gives them a little breathing room. Again, there's a lot of time left here, and we've seen this ball game go back and forth. Here we have the scoring drive, 24 yards after the fumble on the on the kickoff, and for some reason, Washington State is up here in a hands team expecting an onside kick. The catch made deep by Sunday right there, and he is brought down inside the five-yard line. So Price has me on that one. Uh, there was no reason for Wyoming to come up with an onside kick, and they had the hands team out there, everybody up front. Uh, one back uh, to, to field the ball, and now they're in terrible position. I do not understand that idea at all. Aaron Garcia back at quarterback, and there's Mike Price trying to figure things out. 23-14 Wyoming with the lead. Now keep in mind, Price was hoping to get some snaps again from Mike Pattinson, the true freshman out of Moscow, Idaho, the number two quarterback. He hasn't been able to do that. First and ten with the ball on the five for the Cougars, who trail by nine. The delayed handoff to Paul Carr, and he is able to get out to about the eight-yard line. Tom Williams, you know, the stop for the Cowboys. The Cougars are really out of sync here. The, the coaching staff is not getting the right players in to run the right plays. Uh, you can tell there's a little hesitancy in the backfield there. Uh, this is where the quarterback's got to grab these guys by the face mask and say, let's go for this big 95-yard drive, and this is where you build leaders. Second and six now from the nine-yard line. Aaron Garcia, the freshman out of Sacramento. Time to throw. Finds his tight end, Doug Wellsant, who has the first down. The young man out of Ritzville out to the 17-yard line. Well, this is the same kind of concept that Wyoming was throwing at the Cougar defense, and so Mike Christ and his people are going to throw it right back at him with a little tight end running his man-on-man -man route in the flat. Good play, good safe play to get the first down. Nice catch by Wellsant. Good job keeping his feet inbounds. Mike Price trying to rally his Cougars. Well, he's asking questions. He's talking to himself, and that's not good. Mike, you got to get him going. Paul Carr comes off. The last minute, Cougars with two wide receivers left and right. Handoff goes to Rodney Scott, I believe, who's in the backfield for Washington State. And Scott gets across the 20. We need a drive, like we've been saying, and this is the kind of thing that we need to mix up the plays. Nice possession passes. Let's not try to get it all back here. We've got 11-20 left to play in this game, and all we need is two scores to win this. That's how you got to be thinking as far as an offensive coordinator. Again, we see a lot of mix-up. The Cougar, as far as the offense, trying to get the right people in at the right time. Now you've got probably uh, 10 seconds to get this playoff, and we'll probably see you know, a, a hurried up delay game, people running all over the place. Four seconds on the clock. Garcia just gets it off. Cougars go with the reverse. Stallworth again, and this time he's wrapped up. Dorel Drake with the excellent pursuit, and Stallworth very slow getting it up. Remember, on a pass play earlier, Stallworth came up holding his shoulder. And Dorel Drake getting the victory ride right now. This Wyoming defense is pumped up. I can't tell what's wrong. It looks like they're looking at his, at his left shoulder, perhaps. No, left, left knee. Here we see it on the replay. Pitch the car, the handoff. Coming around the end, looking for that block from Garcia. Doesn't get it. There you see the, the ankles getting thrown around a little bit there, hitting the helmets. Uh, he looks to be okay, though. Here again. This play has got to be set up right, and you're not going to fool anybody by having wide receivers running around trying to get into the huddle. Uh, you're not setting up any surprise with a, with a real late injury into the huddle. Cougars with just 232 yards of total offense. They came into this game averaging... 418. Another third down situation. Third and seven. Cougars have gone long. A long pass pattern most of the time here. Let's see if they go shorter this time. Garcia, time to throw. Can't find a receiver. Fly goes down. Pass is incomplete. And it's going to be a holding call against Washington State, no doubt. Dorel Drake with the defensive pressure along with Craig Schlichting. And Drake comes up limping. And it's a face mask call according to one of the Wyoming Cowboys, but they go holding against Washington State. 
again, it's uh, been the same old story all all game. We have had holding, we have had a mixture of penalties. We have holding, keeps the offense, decline. Look at him. Here's Garcia trying to find somebody, looking, looking, has a presence just to sit in the pocket. you hear from the crowd and a standing ovation from the Cowboy faithful for the defense. They declined the penalty. Rob Myers on the punt. Cougars ran a fake punt for a first down in the third quarter. I don't think they would do it in this situation here. No rush. Myers gets the kick away. A good driving kick. And Merriman won't even have a chance to catch it. And it goes out of bounds at the four. What a kick by Brad Myers. 75 yards on the kick. A 75-yard kick for Rob Myers. And that is a big boost. That certainly helps. Excellent punt by Rob Meyer, taking that ball all the way down to the five-yard line of Wyoming. This, again, is an opportunity to change the momentum of the game if the defense can get three plays and get out of there and give the offense an opportunity to get the ball uh, the 50-yard line and in. So this defense really likes to pride itself as a big play defense. They say they want to play so well that kids want to go to Washington State to play defense, not offense, as has always been the case. They've been able to come up with big plays. Let's see if they can do it here. Gunn and Bennett in the backfield. Carranza is the pitch. Back to Gunn, and he's wrapped up at the four. Dan Grayson there. You like seeing that? A pitch in the end zone? Gutsy play there, but... Excellent job by the Cougars to contain that. And Grayson was right there in his lane to fill and support. Lost the one yard. That's the kind of thing you want to see. Good job by the defense. Again, big series. There you see Mark Ledbetter, Dan Grayson, talking things over with Tim Downing, Jerron Woodley. Marlon Brown chanting, let's go, let's go, let's get that pressure on. Randy Gray also on that defensive line. Second and quality 11. Cougars spelling around at the linebacker spot. Hand up inside the gun, and he's wrapped up. Got about two yards, but it sets up a third long. This is what the Cougars are hoping for. This is an opportunity to bring in the people that need to cover man-to-man, -man, bring in a nickel package, bring in their five-down lineman concept, and really quick pressure. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Roach is interested in throwing this ball down here, given an opportunity for a turnover. Cougars with Ricard, John Diggs, Roosevelt Noble, Chris Moton in the backfield. Jay Langwood might normally be in there, but he has a hit for him. If the Cougars were to go to the nickelback position. Here comes the blitz. Carranza has brought it back. It. Randy Gray got the hands on it. And got two good hands on it. I thought we were going to get another third interception by a lineman this time for a touchdown. Good job by Randy Gray getting the hands up. They're getting Cougars coming with a wholesale blitz trying to force something to happen, and they almost got a big play out of it. Here's Big Gray, big pause, got a piece of it. Gray and Tim Downing each with interceptions against Oregon State last week. A rare situation where two defensive linemen get interception. Here's Cougars with a chance for great field position. Opportunity to block the kick also. Plumbing from the end zone. Gets the kick away, a high kick. Fair catch called for by Diggs back at the 40-yard line. The main thing is he caught the ball, and that's what the Cougars want. Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator, applauds his troops as they come back. And now the pressure goes to Aaron Garcia. He's got to get the offense jump-started right here. That's right, and they've got an opportunity to do some things out here. They're not in their own end zone. They've got pretty good field position on their own 39. Tim Stallworth is back out for Washington State, so that is good news. These are the type of games that if you can pull them off, really add to the chemistry of the whole season. And this is the type of games that uh, build Rose Bowl teams. Trips right. Play fake the caller down the middle, throw it. He's got him open. It's C.J. Davis. Touchdown, Washington State. There are no flags. Aaron Garcia, 60 yards to C.J. Davis. Well, I got hooked up on Stallworth just like the rest of the Wyoming team did. And there was C.J. Davis. Give that boy some oxygen because he made a great play, and that was Garcia letting it all hang out right there, folks. Excellent play. We had 61 yards worth of air for that, that ball. Big, big, big play for the Cougars. And again, this field position that allowed them to do it. Got to give some of that credit to the defense. Certainly do. Let's take a look again. We've seen Garcia throw long before. He overthrew his receivers every time. This time, patience, 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 and really gunned it, got drilled. And there's C.J. corralling it. Second touchdown of the game, third of the season for the young man out of 
Tacoma. Hansen adds the extra point. 8.35, let's play this football game. Plenty of time, it's a two-point game. Wyoming, 23. Washington State, 21. You're watching Cougar Football 89 on Prime Sports Northwest. Davis get right behind him. Excellent throw. Excellent job by Garcia. Hang it tough. In the last second to deliver, deliver that ball. And that pumps new life into the Washington State Cougars as into this ball game. Uh, Wyoming was looking to take control. Hanson's kick and he drives it high and deep and there will be no return. So the Cowboys will start with the football on their own 20 and the Cougar defense will try to come back and duplicate what they did the last time they were out on the field as they stopped Wyoming in three plays. Tom Carranza is 15 out of 22 for 140 yards. He has a touchdown and one interception. The Cowboys with a two-point lead in this game, 23-21, 8-35 left to play in the football game. Well, here as Aaron Garcia needed to bring his team back, now it falls on Tom Carranza to bring his guys back. And we'll see if uh, the Washington defense is up to the task. Carranza will throw the pop fake. And as a man on the sideline, Gilmore will catch him goes out of bounds. Inside Cougar territory to the 46. Really excellent route there by Gilmore. I think we had Roosevelt Noble up there uh, biting on that fake a little bit. He was going to get that pick. Here you go with Carranza is letting it go. Let him a little bit out of bounds, otherwise Gilmore could still be running. Oh, Ooh, awful close to being out of bounds. In state. Awful close to being out of bounds there, but the referee was right on. 34-yard gain on that pass play. No big play for Wyoming. This uh, this game never seems to stop. A lot of ball, a lot of ball left to be played. Carranza is going to the audible with the trips wide receivers to the right side. Cougars go out of the blitz now. Carranza is the quick pass, and it is almost an interference call and almost intercepted by Chris Moton. You hear the boos from the Cowboy fans. They thought Wiggins was interfered with, but Moton went through him to get his hand on the ball. And that's a clean play. Ah, uh, that's not a clean play. Oh, come on. <laughs> but it's one for us. He yeah, makes they a contact with the ball at the same time he gets, gets Wiggins. It looked like Motown had his left arm wrapped around the receiver as he went through the, and knocked that ball away. But again, the referee's right there, and that's a judgment call, and we'll take one for us finally. There you see the trips formation again as Carranzas looks that way to the right. Second and ten for the 46. Dawson goes in motion. Nobody in the backfield. Over the middle pass to guess who? Gordy Wood. Ron Ricard makes the stop. That's little Ron Ricard making a pretty nice little tackle on big Gordy Woods. Gordy Woods doing an excellent job today. I can see why he's so highly touted. He's one of the best pass receiving tight ends I think we've seen this year. Gain of four to the 42. Sets up a third and six now for the Cowboys. So again, Another big third down play for the Cougar defense. Randy Gray comes off. Kirk Westerfield is in on the D-line. Double tight end, and Bowers joins Gordy Wood. That's Daryl Perkins going in motion. Carantis over the middle, finds Wood. He was stopped short of the first down, but good second effort, and he gets the first down. That is a first down for Mr. Wood. Excellent job by Gordy Wood to get the first down there. That time they just flip-flopped the formation, did the same thing they did on the other play, and they saw something they liked with Dan Grayson leaving the middle. Here's Gordy catching the ball, taking a shot, spinning off it. Good job getting the first down. That hurt the Cougs, though. Alvin Dunn just about had him wrapped up, shy of the first down. First and 10 from the 35. Handoff. This is Ben, I believe, this is one of them. No, it's Dawson again, and he's down here with 20 yard line. But you got to believe that the defensive line for Washington State is starting to wear down, and we'll start to see some substitutions. You can see the guys patting their head. Here's Carranzas giving the ball to Dawson deep, looking for those blocks by joining Jones, and does a good job of breaking it out to the outside and getting a little extra. Kurt Newton, six-foot sophomore in, in place of Dan Grayson at linebacker. Grayson needed to come out and get a quick drink. Carranzas with Jones in the backfield. Cougar showing the blitz. Handoff to Jones. And he is wrapped up 
as Newton got a hand on him in the backfield, and Jones was able to fall forward. Conrad Pimiskirt is in on the defensive line as well. Good job by Newton taking Grayson's place and doing basically the same thing that Grayson's been doing all day, is stunting into that gap, making something happen in the backfield. There's Conrad on the sidelines getting his little piece in. Rod Plummer coming off, as you're seeing, as you alluded to, the Cougars with a number of defensive changes. You see the numbers on Carranza's second down, looking for Dawson, and he was covered. Gets away from Jerron Woodward. And Carranza's out of bounds at the 19 as he was able to break away from some other pursuit that was by Tim Dowling of Washington State. Dowling says, I need a rest, and he stays on the sideline. Well, Jerron Woodley had uh, Tom in his sights. He kind of eased up when he went to hit him, which is very unusual. And again, I got to attribute that to being a little bit tired. He just didn't wrap him up, didn't make that play. But that's the one that the defensive lineman dreamed for. Tom Carras is making a good play to get away from there. Third and five from the 17 now. Two tight ends again. Let's see if they look for Mr. Wood across the middle. Carranzas with the long count. Wanted to look in zone, not this time. Credit that one to the Cougars secondary. They did a nice job. Absolutely. That time they kept Gordy Wood in to help with the pass protection. They're trying to work one-on-one -on -one with uh, Gilmore down here on the near side. Excellent job by the two corners for Washington State to stop that and force these guys to go for the field goal. Sean Fleming will try it from the 26-yard line, so a 36-yard attempt. Want to watch Roosevelt Noble again up on the top here coming after this ball. Got it up, and missed it to the left. Oh, that clutch. Fleming missed it to the left. Had he made that, the Cougars would have been scored, forced to score a touchdown. But with Fleming missing that, now Jason Hansen becomes that much more of a factor. 5.53 left in this football game, and the Cowboys clinging to a two-point lead. Well, as good as Fleming's been all day, that was the one that you really needed to, to make that... WSU team have to drive the length of the field and with the weapon they have on their side with Jason Hansen now they have an opportunity to go down and, and get control of this game. And the win at Hansen's back. Garcia with one setback. That is Carr. Has Stallworth in a slot. Hand off to Carr. Gets a block from Stallworth and able to get outside. He lost his balance and took up a chunk of the turf at the 24. We've seen a lot of slipping today on this turf. You'd think it'd be in pretty good shape. Uh, but there's been a lot of people slipping uh, on both sides of the ball. Paul Carr having a pretty good day today here. As I understand it, they've had a decent amount of rain here in Laramie of late, and that perhaps causing the field to be a little tough as far as the footing goes. Carr, 85 yards on the ground. Second and a long five for the Cougars. Garcia. Quick drop, wants to go sideline, home run ball for Davis, and it's overthrown. Coverage on the play by Paul Wallace, but he was right there. Got a flag back here again. Another flag, it's in the backfield, and it's face, face mask, mask against the Cougars. Well, the Cougars now have been penalized for close to 100 yards in this contest. I disagree with that call, though. You need to get all the face mask by the offense, half the distance, still second down. Again, it's hindsight, and if C.J. catches that for a touchdown, you say it's a great call, but I'd like to see him march down the field. Let's get the first down here first. Get the ball out of your own end zone. Let's show the throw to Wellstand, get a five-yard pickup, but instead they went for the deep one and got the penalty that sets them back. Second and 18 from the 12. 11 penalties for 80 yards against Washington State. Just kill him. Look for the blitz here from the Cowboys. That's what they're showing. Garcia, quick drop, throws it out. It is caught. That's Ron Young. Nice move. First down, Washington State. Young with a great move to get by Ivor Samilton. Young second catches a Cougar, and that's a big one. That's the kind of pass I want to see here with Garcia. A three-step drop, fire out the flat, and let Young do his deal. Makes a good little juke move, threatens the outside, crossover, and uh, that's a, just a big play to get that first down and keep this drive alive. Excellent job by the young outside receiver, Young. 21 yards on the play. 
first and ten from the 33. Cougars with Rodney Scott in a slot position. Now Garcia now 9 out of 19 for 196 yards. A handoff to Carr on the delay, and he is hit from behind by Darren Weir, a 6'3 freshman out of Cody, Wyoming. And Carr credited with a gain of about two on that play. Again, we're looking for ball control. Move it down the field. Let's get a first down. Let's not think home run. Let's move it to midfield here. 4.15, clock running. Three timeouts left for Washington State. And the ideal situation for the Cougars would be to be able to go down and score and obviously not leave Wyoming much clock to work with. And the Cowboys have just one timeout left. That's what you want to do. A nice controlled drive. Get this ball. They need to call timeout here. Cougars with some confusion as Stallworth was going to the slot. Ron Young and C.J. Davis were the wide receivers, but Stallworth calling timeout. And Washington State uses one of those three. So the Cougars with two timeouts remaining, stopping the clock with 3.57 left to go. That was a function, I think, a little bit of Washington State's receivers, some people being winded, some people uh, not getting the right people in at the right time. Dell White, the defensive coordinator, talking with Daryl Harris. Robert Midget, the linebacker there. As you see some of the Cowboy Mayfield hoping to see the Pokes come up with the upset here and improve their record to 2-2. Two two. Washington State on an eight-game winning streak, and they would love to be able to stretch that to nine. It's the longest winning streak in the Pac-10 right now, the fourth longest in the nation. Well, this is obviously a big series, and again, I look for something different here. Let's throw to somebody who we haven't haven't uh, haven't seen so far. There lately, uh, we had uh, Young catching a pass out in the flat. Something that maybe Dell White and his people aren't thinking about. And I'd like to see maybe a screen pass to Carr, something to break it up a little bit, something new. Let's see what Garcia does. Same formation, trips left, Stallworth in the slot. Carr goes in motion. Screen set up. It's Stallworth, and he gets to the 40. So a screen to the slot back, Stallworth, and he gets it to the 40. It'll set up a third and a long three for the Cougars. Well, I like that call. Stallworth set in there, kind of hiding behind the big guy. Garcia gets that ball to him a little quicker. He's got some room to run. Here you see Garcia, though, sets it up nicely. But you see him lob that ball off his back foot, and that allowed the defensive lineman to get back and make a play, although Stallworth did pick up pretty good yardage. Big play, third and three, although you got to believe the Cougars have two downs to pick up three yards. Look for Stallworth in the flat down here. Garcia calling an audible, and the Cougars move. Although it's a wide receiver, it was Wilson lined up off the line, so it doesn't matter. Home run ball intended for Stallworth. Makes the catch yep. and drops the ball. we got a flag. It might be interference against Wyoming. Let's see it. Dead ball. Strange play right from the start. Doug Wilson moved, but he was actually off the line, so he wasn't an interior lineman. So he could move. That's right. The tight end can move and step, and the referee should not blow that whistle. But we got delay of game. Delay of game. Interesting. Up against Washington State. Look at Mike Price. He says, okay, guys, now we've got two plays to make eight yards. Again, there's been uh, a lot of... So now you see Aaron Garcia sending C.J. Davis off. Robert Stogner comes in with the play call. Third and eight from the 35. Cougars have to get it to the... Just outside the 43. They've got two plays to do it. Three minutes to go. Three minutes in the football game. And the clock is now stopped. Our friend, the referee, is uh, taking control of the game again here and make sure all his people know what's going on. They've been busy today. One thing, as you look at this game play, it's really the first time that Washington State has faced adversity this season. They were down early against Idaho, but it was so early they had plenty of time. Now a situation where obviously they've got to score to win this football game. If they were able to come back and win it, it would have to give them tremendous confidence going up against USC next week. If they are unable to pull this one out, then they really have to have a great week of practice to regroup. you got Rossard out, you got Swing injured, and you got Aaron Garcia in quarterback. Garcia timed the throw over the middle, 
It was intercepted. George Dozier with the interception, and he's got running room. Flags thrown. It'll be a flip on the run back, I believe, in and out of the hands of Ron Young. The pass was thrown high, and Young had to stretch for it. And it was the tip drill as Dozier made the interception. But wait a minute. Indication that perhaps there's a pass interference? Nope. Nope, flip. Cougars were applauding like maybe it was going to come back. But it is on the run back. Against the defensive team on the run back at the 15 yard penalty. First down. So the Cowboys with the football and it is being spotted. Here's Garcia dropping back, delivers the ball, and he's got Young. He's there. It just he missed time to step. Didn't get a good leap to the ball. And Wyoming's there for the tip ball. There's the clip you see. Still a lot of time, 2.47 left in this game. Wyoming's got to move the ball. The Cougars have another chance. And Karantas rolls, and he is sacked. To Ron Woodley, football falls loose. Cougars might have it. They're saying they got the ball. Let's see, let's see what this black official official says today. Cougars, oh, unbelievable. unbelievable. Unbelievable turn of events. cannot believe that. Perantz is rolling to his left. Ledbetter says, I got it. It's my ball. Come on, I'll take it. And the Cougars well, get six yards on the play. They get more than six. six. They get 11 on the play. The ball's at 42 of Wyoming. And with the wind behind the back, you're almost in Jason Hansen. Field goal territory already. 2.38 to play. As a quarterback, you're telling your running back, hold on to the ball. Just run straight forward. Make Car. sure you wrap it up to the 40. You want to get a first down. You want to continue to move this drive down. But you, most of all, want to make sure that you're not careless with that football. I expect Mike Price to throw nice, safe pass routes and do plays from the running standpoint where you're not, you're not being fancy. We just need to establish that this fourth quarter is ours now, and we're going to win this game. Unbelievable that Wyoming would run a nice, safe rollout as you look at the Wyoming or the Cougar staff, but the, that Wyoming would run a nice safe rollout. You know, the, the worst thing's going to happen. Your quarterback's going to get sacked for a loss, and they end up fumbling the ball. Two minutes now left to play in the football game. Cowboys lead it by two, 23, 21. Three seconds to snap the ball. Garcia gets it off. He wants to throw. Has all kinds of time. Had stolen, but doesn't get it. And Garcia's wrapped up and finally knocked out Tom Williams. Let's see if they stop the clock. They do as Garcia is out at the 38-yard line. So gain a three for Garcia. Garcia got locked on a receiver there, and he actually had Calvin Griggs up at the top running an out route that was wide open. Uh, but he, you know, made a good decision, I think, again, to tuck it down after the play had broken down. And again, an opportunity here for a big first down for the Cougars. Third and six from the 38. If the Cougars do not gain a yard, it would be a 55-yard field goal attempt by Jason Hansen. Let's see what happens. This is Carr. Left side. Got a chance. Him. First Got a chance. Down four. Carr inside the 20. Up and it hangs on to the football after a big hit at the 12. 138 to play in the football game. Oh, my. You just... Unbelievable turn of events. I keep saying that, but here, third and six, they elect to run the ball. Make a, create a good hole for Carr. He almost stumbles. He sees it so wide open. Here he goes down to about the 10-yard line. Excellent job, excellent play call, excellent blocking there by the wide receivers who were in man-to-man -man coverage there and were able to take their people down the field before they had to make the, make the, chain, make the, make the play. Clock is running. Car over 100 yards on the afternoon. Garcia going to use as much of the time as he can. He wants Stallworth. Over the middle for Stallworth. Knocked away. Car 111 yards rushing down. That was the same play that they scored on last week against Oregon State. Here's Garcia sets up. Kind of lobbed the ball over the top. Pretty good coverage there by Wyoming on the D, though. Good man-to-man -man coverage. Here's Garcia again delivering the ball. 
Caleb Inch is right there, just tipped it away at the last instant. Paul Wallace just getting a fingertip on it. 23 21 Wyoming. 115 to play in the football game. Second down and 10 from the 13 for the Cougars. There's Aaron Garcia. Baptism under fire. Paul Carr. Get in there. Oh, just lost his balance. He's down to about the two, is where they will mark it. Just inside the two. First and goal, Washington State. Well, we need to consider the clock here. We've got a minute. We don't want to get down there giving everybody a high five. You want to make sure you get in the end zone here. Carr with 11 on that carry. Now with 122 on the game. Excellent, excellent line surge. The clock is running. They're in two tights. Uh, the concern is, do we get in the end zone? Do we call timeouts? Uh, big play here. And one of those tight ends is Rod Olson. Great to see he's back in the lineup. Hand off the car. He's in there. Touchdown, Washington State. Paul Carr with the two. There it is. There it is. Touchdown, Washington State. What a comeback. What a comeback. And this crowd is stunned and we're elated. Paul Carr doing most of the work on that drive. The big, big turnover by Wyoming. Here we go, two tight ends. Cowboys in a stunt, a big mix up in there. The ball car with his forward lean keeps the legs turning and gets the ball over the line. And Washington State is calls again. timeout. Good line surge. You can see the whole pile moving forward. Paul Wolf getting his guy. And again, you saw the stunt from the end zone there that looked like Wyoming was trying to do some type of, of games in there and crack crossed up and blocked themselves on that play. Big, big play. Some of the Wyoming fans are, are starting to leave now, but you gotta, you got to bet they're pretty happy with the way their team plays today. They have this game in their grasp. Cougars go 42 yards in six plays, much of the dismay of Paul Roach. Looks like the Cougars here are going to go for two, seeing as one point doesn't do them any good. I think it's an opportunity maybe to run the clock down a little bit more and take some time off of that. Plus, if you get to... Then, as you can see, this game produced by Brian Murray and the rest of the crew. We thank them very much for an outstanding job. But to continue the thought on the two-point conversion, if you do get to it's a six-point lead, then if the Wyoming Cowboys do manage to come back and score a touchdown, you can still salvage a tie if you're able to block an extra point. I guess the thing is here is it doesn't make any sense to kick the extra point. So yep. why not run some time off the clock? And a little experience or an item later on when he might need to. Looking for Stallworth, had him, now throws over the middle, wide open, two points, Calvin Griggs. Griggs makes the catch, Cougars stretch the lead to 29 to 23. I guess the clock does not move on an extra point. You should have known that. Yeah, I, I should have known that, but uh, so much again for color, color commentary. Maybe, maybe these things have changed since you played. That was such a long that time ago. That was a long time ago. ago. I tell you, I got great hairs today, though. Unbelievable turn of events that rolled out by Carrasso, getting sacked, fumbling the ball, Ledbetter recovers. Uh, you know, you just, you couldn't have called that any better. You couldn't have wished for anything better. As here's the scoring drive, 42 yards, six plays, a minute 49 with Paul Carr, two yard run into the end zone. And I don't think Paul will see too many bigger runs than that. There's Calvin Griggs who caught the uh, two point conversion. You'll see they flooded out here, here's Garcia getting a good block to get him time around the corner. They're staring at Stallworth. He's double covered. That leaves Calvin Griggs sitting in the end zone all by himself. Nice dive and catch there. Now Jason Hansen set the kickoff with the wind at his back and the way that Wyoming has been able to get some decent returns. Hansen a very good weapon here and that you can expect him just to boot it way out of the end zone. So yeah, you got to will have to take it from the scrimmage of 20. You know, this game is not over, though. Certainly not. Yeah. Wyoming has shown that they have the capability to move the ball. And one of the things that will happen a lot of times in this uh, prevent defense is you give up the things underneath in 20, 25 chunks. So you got to make sure that you continue to put the pressure uh, on at the line. Be ready with your changes on defense and, uh, and make sure that Wyoming does not have a chance to get back into this ball game. And one guy we really haven't seen much from, but he's a speedster, is Melvin Wells. Won't see him on this one. Upright, about 75 percent up, up the, up the, up the bar. Pack of a kicker, Jason Hansen. Thank God we didn't have to use him for that last one. But the Cougs were able to drive it in and take the, take the touchdown. Really, just took it right out of the heart of Wyoming. 49 seconds left to play in the football game. The Cowboys have a timeout remaining. 
I don't think it's uh, quite Hail Mary time yet, but they've got three wide receivers. They're speedsters down here on the side. And I think you'll see Carranza's come down to them. If not, go to Gordy. Gordy Woods up on top. Sometimes that happens. He's hit. Oh, oh, oh. His arm was going forward, they say. It'll be an incomplete pass. Marlon Brown covered the ball. Tim Gowdy, I believe, with the big hit. It'll be second down and ten. And Carranza's paid for things here. He did. Downing comes through his blocks and uh, excellent job, excellent pressure. That's the thing you got to have. I thought that might have been a fumble because the ball did go backwards. Juan was starting to come forward though. Second and ten. Overruled by Bud Mamick on that call. Gabby Goss of a low setback for Carranza. They have the trips right with him. Here's the rush again. Carranza over the middle. And that's a heck of a catch if it's indeed a catch. Did they say Gilmore got it? There's no way he caught that ball. Cougars don't think so. The officials are saying yes. Well, from up here, it looked like uh, he had to lay out for and trap that ball. Here's a better angle of it. To see them diving across. That's on the ground. He didn't catch that ball. 37 seconds left in this game, and... Uh, Again, this is a better spot to throw that big home run ball. We'll see what type of Toronto's arm you got. Wyoming has used their final timeout, so they have the football on their own 37 with 37 seconds left. And you can see the Cowboys trying to rest up for that final surge and give credit to the, the fans here at War Memorial Stadium. They're staying here. They're rooting the Cowboys on, and they've been stunned, as you alluded to earlier, with Washington State coming from behind to take this 29-23 lead. Cougars hold on and win this game. It'll be the first game that Mike Price has won as a Cougar head coach without scoring 40 points. I don't think he cares. I, I don't care either. I just like it in the W column and to get out of here. This is a tough place to play. And again, it's not over. We've still got to put pressure on the quarterback. We've got to make sure that nobody gets behind us. And that uh, when someone does catch the ball over the middle, that you tackle him and make sure that he doesn't break anything. Gilmore Wells and Wiggins, the wide receivers to the left, with the tight end on the right. Carranza, straight back. Here comes the pressure, screen to Dawson. And he is brought down as Mark Ledbetter right there at the 42. 28 seconds, the clock moving. Cougars will take their time getting set. 20 seconds left to go in this football game. Carranza, quick pass out of bounds to stop the clock. Nice catch by the ball boy on the sideline. He's got a future. There he is, right next to Mike Price. Mike says, nice catch, but one that won a scholarship. But again, this is nerve-wracking time for me. <laughs> I'm going crazy up here. I still can't believe that they got an opportunity to go in and score. That it was just, uh, the football gods were smiling today on, on WSU. Wyoming, I think, outplayed the Cougars today. Trips right for Carranzas with 15 seconds remaining in the football game. It's third and five. They have to... Go upstairs and his bat is down. Gerard Wolfley got a hand on it. And now it's down to one point. 11 seconds left. Fourth down for Wyoming. Good job by Big Gerard. Get his hands up. Knock that ball down. They're getting tired. You know they've been working hard all day coming after Toronto. I'm going to say, even if the Cougars end up winning this game, it's going to be a rather quiet plane ride home, I believe. I don't think so. <laughs> I know I'll be loud on my plane ride. 11 seconds, fourth and five, here we go. Carantis will just throw it up. Right. Roosevelt Noble, interception. interception. Excellent job by Roosevelt to go up and get that ball. That's the game, folks. That's all it's Noble's second interception of the game, three seconds left.